Times Not On Adventures. How are you? Welcome and happy Monday to you. Welcome back to Douglas Overseas. We are in Greece. We're in Zakynthos. And we've got an interesting one for you tonight. We are adding a stop from our original proposed itinerary. Of course, I always said from the outset, I never shared the actual full itinerary for this one like I did for the great BE58 Lower 48 State Tour we did a couple of years ago. This one was always kind of intended to be, well, here's kind of a general plan, but you know, we'll kind of make it up as we go along. So we worked in a stop that we're going to hit tonight. That was at the suggestion of our friend and, uh, and, and stream inspiration, I guess you could call him, uh, 757 Spy. He does an awful lot of flying over here in the Greek Islands. Of course, he tends to do a little bit more flying in like regional airliners, small line, like uh, um, what is it, a Gian that he tends to fly, Gian Airlines, the uh, little E-Jets, or Gian. So he tends to fly, you know, kind of commercial routes here. But he suggested that we add a stop tonight at a place called Porto Healy. We found it here on Sky Vector, and it is here. It is here according to Sky Vector. Let's put it to you that way. It's not anywhere according to the default X-Plane scenery or the, well, I don't know if it's the default or maybe it's the ortho X-Plane scenery that we have cooked up in this area. I was not able to spawn in at this airport. And I was like, well, gee, that's weird. I looked on the X-Plane org forums. And I was like, well, I guess I better look and see if there's some custom scenery for this place. There's not. Um, in some instances, some references, I think in 757 Spies stream, in fact, this was being spelled with a C, Porto Chile. And, uh, I, you know, I don't know that much about Greek. It's all Greek to me, honestly. But I know that there's some variations on how Americanized spellings of foreign places can be. So I was like, well, I'll look under Porto Healy, I'll look under Porto Chile, and didn't find anything. Then I was like, alright, well, I'll come over here to uh, Navigraph Charts. Navigraph Charts, global. And there's no place this place does not know. And I did that, and no no research for LGHL. LG, LGHL, yeah, that's correct, that's what I got in there. So then I was like, alright, well, how about Healy? And we found uh, heliports and Helio Wasum and Richelieu, Canada, and Mohili, and some more heliports and some, some waypoints, but nothing called Porto Healy. And then I did uh, Chile. And there's a point called, this is one of the ones that we were just looking at, there's a point called Chile, anywhere near where we are. So, I was like, okay. Well, that's interesting. 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 That's exactly what Mork has just commented. Yes, indeed, Mork. Bombs Away is with us. Dave Rendon is here. Captain Scientist has checked in. So, I did a little more investigating, and let's go back to... Let's... Whoops, 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 whoops. That's not what I meant to do. Um... Yeah, that's not what I meant to do. Uh, oh, wait a minute. Sky Vector is what I had up there. That's There we go. Let's put Sky Vector back up there. Um, so that's not what I meant to do. What I meant to do is come back here, and let's just put this back to where we're starting. LG, ZA. And I'll just get that chart up in front of us, because that's where we're starting tonight. Let's get that there. Okay. Not too much at that airport where we need a diagram, but that's all right. Anyway, where were we? Uh, oh yeah, so I went a little. I went a little exploring. I took the uh, I took the camera, took the map mode and X plane. I took the camera and I did some flying around, and I eventually found it. Let me show you the picture that I sent to Seven Five Seven Spy here just a little bit ago. I was like, are, "Are you serious? This is where we're going?" And he was like, "Yeah, pretty much. That's where we're going." That is where we're going. We're going to do some Grecian bush strip flying, guys. That is that is what we're looking for. 
Um, so there's not much of a strip there, and I have no idea. It's not It's not even in the scenery, so if we crash there, we can't respawn. We're going to have to respawn somewhere else. <laughs> so we'll do our best. Hopefully everything will go according to plan. Hopefully the, the, the ortho that I have here, I don't know if it's similar to what 757 Spy uses for ortho in this region, but hopefully whatever I've got rendered in there is smooth enough that we'll be able to make a uh, make a smooth touchdown. I, it does look like kind of there's this little path that cuts through, and it, 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 it kind of tells me, it kind, kind of gives me the impression that there's like a ripple in the runway there. So I think we're gonna I, we're gonna kind of land. We're gonna kind of aim to land in this section. So I think that's what our plan is. Look at the look at how this drops off afterward too. Um, <laughs> this is gonna be a fun one. And like I said, if we do end up crashing, we're not gonna be able to respawn there because X plane doesn't recognize it as a spawnable location. So should be fun. Anyway, the other fun thing that we've got tonight. Uh, sorry, let me just get the show schedule back up over there, because we'll talk about that later. Just kind of re-prep some stuff for the, uh, for the latter part of the show. The other fun thing that we've got in store for you tonight is yet another, on this first leg, yet another canyon run. We've been doing, we did a canyon run through Sardinia, over here. Right, we did this, we did this canyon through Sardinia. Where was it? One of these. Uh, no, it wasn't Sard uh, this is, uh, this is Corsica. There we are. We did this canyon run through Corsica, and then came down, we flew down the west coast of Sardinia. So we did a canyon run there, we did a canyon run through Sicily, we, f we flew eastbound from, uh, from the airport, and then down through this canyon here, and, uh, across to the south side of the island. So we're gonna do our third, uh, canyon run. Of the uh, of the of the Mediterranean portion of the tour here, as we're going to take off from Zakynthos, we'll fly eastbound. I presume this is mainland Greece at this point. This is all part of the mainland. I think there's that little uh, isthmus. Is that what that's called? A little a little connecting strip there that makes this all part of mainland Greece that we're about to fly down. Uh, but we're going to fly uh, down this canyon here. Oops, didn't mean to adjust the route. And then uh, as we come around the bottom end of that uh, ridge, make a left, go to the end of the ridge. i tell you what, you go to the end of the Here's what you do. You go to the end of the ridge. You make a left. You follow water. Around the other side of the island, Porta Healy's right there. Okay. That's what we're going <laughs> to do. That's what we're going to do. That's what we're going to do. Leg two, then, is a very straight ocean shot. We'll have to figure out. We may end up doing some dead reckoning. We may end up doing some position references off of these VORs just to kind of keep track of our progress across the open water here. I think we'll be in range of those. So I think we should be fine as far as uh, being able to ascertain our position with certainty rather than just, you know, point and guess. So we should be good. Uh, but that'll be leg two, and uh, we, we've demonstrated on the stream uh, numerous times how we can get position references off of VORs that we are not necessarily tracking toward or away from, that we're not tracking radials or airways from, but we can still use them as uh, as point references. And we'll show you again, uh, guys again how to do that if you're new to the stream. might learn a new technique tonight on leg two. But leg one is going to be mostly visually flown. We might, uh, we might pull up this NDB uh, just as a reference to our entry point. Wouldn't be a bad idea, probably and then make sure we're going due east from there. But uh, other than that, we're going to navigate this canyon visually, come out the bottom end of the ridge, and then uh, up and around, and hopefully we'll find Porto Healy to, to be smooth enough to land without hurting the airplane. We'll see, and of course that's always contingent upon my bush landing technique, which is not very good in any plane, but it's not going to be great in Douglas DC-3. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it goes. Any questions? No? All right, let's pile in. Now the door's open, you guys can go ahead and pile into the aircraft while I go ahead and get into the cockpit here, start powering up the plane, get ready to go. Yeah, it's a bushy DC-3. Well, Northwest Orient will be proud. He does a lot of that bush flying here at uh, DC-3 when we, when we do those bush trips. He's darn good at it, and I am not. <laughs> so we'll see. Hopefully some of his, his uh, skills will osmosis their way over to me, over the internet here between... Now and the next time. Uh, oh, say hour and one minute from now. 
<laughs> All right, we have our fuel load set. We've got uh, we can go ahead and get our master battery switch on. Uh, the one thing I didn't do, and I will do right quick, um, just run all the controls through their range, just make sure that everything is detecting full range. I'm going to pop the parking brake back on, move the uh, yoke around, make sure the full range of uh, movement is detected. Of course, you can't see the yokes moving, but sometimes just pushing it through its full range helps to uh, make sure it's detecting its, uh, its full left and full right motion there. Um, so master batteries on, let's get the no smoking and nav lights on, and that way, you know, you guys can start making your way in. And oh, and the beacon light as well, since we are about to fire an engine up. Get the fuel tanks set to the mains, the left main here, and the right main here. And we'll show you a technique later on for... Um, for rebalancing in a cross configuration that will prevent me from draining the, the one side of the plane. Sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. Cows can go open. That's those two white sink handles over there to the right of the first officer's seat. And they are now open. We'll get the prop lever forward. Get the uh, throttle crack just a touch. And we'll start with the engine number two. Engine number two is also kind of our APU. We don't have an APU in a Douglas DC-3. Is that, that's, that's emergency rich there, so there's auto rich there. Uh, so mix, magnetos, fuel pump, prime it up, clear it, and start it. Yeah, no smoking on the DC-3 since about 2,000 bombs away. Uh, these are 1939 vintage, or 19, yeah, mid-1930s vintage, but we're flying them in, uh, flying them in the modern time, my bud. Uh, we will, we will, uh, we'll toss you out over the water if you, if you want to smoke. I've done that before. <laughs> uh, we got the oil pressure that came up right away, presumably. It's up now, at least. My uh, fuel pressure still artificially elevated because we've still got that electric pump going. Uh, but we'll pop that down, get the generator on. Fuel pump now, a uh, fuel pressure now pointing us straight up, which is kind of its normal reading there, so we're good to go. Um, so we've got our, we've got a good start on number two. We've got electrical power flowing through the aircraft now and uh, our flight plan has already been sent and our progress bar at the top of your screen is already updated uh, the straight line mileage is 100 and I can't remember what it said 111 I think our calculated mileage is going to be 160 so you'll see that progress bar is not going to be real good as far as uh, as providing an estimate for the time tonight but uh, yeah, we're not taking we're taking a pretty circuitous path to get to this place You'll see at that one point, I'm sure it'll go retrograde. It'll say it'll start backing up because we're going to be kind of going further away from it after we get through this portion of the canyon here, passing the Sparty Airport. It looks like we're getting further away from Port Healy for a little bit. So, so yeah, that that progress bar does some weird stuff. It's just because we're taking not quite a uh, not quite a straight path here. Bob's always going to just crack a, a door open once we reach altitude. Yeah, no problem. Remind me and I'll I'll crack it open for you. We'll actually. Uh, let's see. Uh, we don't really have an ATIS or a METAR here. What we do have is Active Sky that can tell us what conditions are. Uh, 160 at 14, so we're going to take off on, I think, the south eastbound runway. And pressure's 1016, which is 30 point nothing. Go ahead and set that down here. Field elevation is. Dun dun dun. 16 feet and we're showing 40 on the altimeter but if you're within 75 that's usually pretty good and of course the ramp might be just a little bit higher than the average field elevation anyway so i think we're good there uh, we would if we had air traffic controllers on vat sim in this area right now we go ahead and get our clearance of course we're vfr so we might not do that at this point anyway um, but we don't have anyone to obtain clearance with so we're going to skip that step altogether in the Outside of the U.S., your standard squawk code for VFR is 7,000. We'll go ahead and get that mode shortly on as well. Nav and ADF tuners can be set as needed. And again, like I said, for leg one here, we're going to be pretty much visually navigating it. But we will tune in this one NDB for the entry point of our, our stream and our canyon. That's going to be on 401 frequency. So we'll go ahead and get that dialed in. There we are. 
I'm probably not receiving that yet. Yeah, no, that, that thin number one arrow would indicate that, and it's still parked in the 3 o'clock position, so not yet receiving anything there. But that's uh, to be expected, and we'll get once, we'll, once we get up to altitude, it's 30 miles away. Once we get up to altitude, we should be receiving something on it. Uh, radio altimeter, I like setting that to 1x for our departure. When that arrow gets up to the 4, that's our signal to uh, pull the flaps in and reduce to climb power. And we'll check our fuel quantity. We are starting with 391 total gallons. So that's going to be just under 100 per tank. We'll say 95 per tank. Now the right main has run down a little bit. But left main's at 95, left aux at 95. Right aux at 95, and the right main maybe just a little bit lower. Yeah, okay, good. So fuel quantities all are checked. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain on behalf of Slant Alpha Airways. We'd like to welcome you aboard Flight 514 with service to Porto Healy. We'll be departing from the terminal here momentarily, expecting an on-time departure. Cruising altitude for the first leg today, just a uh, nice scenic 3,500 feet. Flight time once airborne will be just over an hour. We're charting one hour, one minute. We'll see how we do with that. So buckle in and relax. We'll be underway soon. Thank you again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. Are you guys all in? Let's go. We're just closing. Anybody not in the airplane, you're going to be swimming. Get the seatbelt lights on. Uh, where did I lose my, lost my spot here? Oh, yeah. We're going to go ahead and get the number one fired up now. So that's mix, magnetos, fuel pump, prime it, clear it, and fire away. Here we go. Two Pratt and Whitney twin wasps roaring in your ears. Gotta love the sound of history, gentlemen. Uh, we got the oil pressure is up. Let's go ahead and get the fuel pump off generator on. The engine now has its own fuel pump that should be supplying fuel. And it does appear to be. Fuel pressure is reading normally. So, what do we gotta do now? Um... We will sync our headings. We're pointed at basically a 160 on the nose there, so we'll just make sure that everything is in agreement. That's the top half of that is just the target heading for the uh, for the autopilot. I just set that to zero when I'm not using it, so I'm not looking at the wrong thing because I tend to get those confused pretty easily. Bottom half will set to 16 because that's our current direction, and of course that one I'm spinning the wrong way as I tend to do. Um, 16 on those there. Yeah, I guess that's on the nose. I guess that's on the, as on the nose as we're going to get. So 16. 16's all around, guys. Great. Everybody else have a round of 16's. Put it on my tab. Alright, uh, we would check the flight controls at this point. Again, we're not really checking to see whether the yoke moves. We're checking to see whether the control surfaces outside the plane move. But uh, presumably somebody outside the plane will check those for us. Give us a big thumbs up, say everything is good to go. Trim will be neutralized. Usually it boots up slightly above, so we'll knock it back down to neutral. Go ahead and set flaps one. And, uh, yep, that's confirmed. And we can unlock the tailwheel lock. And the taxi lights can come on, and I think we are ready to go. Uh, we had said we're going to depart... On 1.5, I think it was. Let's get the chart in front of me. 1.6, I'm sorry. So essentially, we just got a uh, back track or back taxi. In the U.S., you'd call that back taxi. I think here we're supposed to call it back track. Uh, and we're, we're parked on this end of the ramp here, so we'll just it doesn't really matter. We'll come back out, back track on 1.6. We'll turn around, face that way, and then be ready to go. And the funny thing is is I think this flag is flapping the wrong way. Where is it? No, gotta go to the outside view. Hold on a second. Yeah, I think that flag is flapping the wrong way, guys. I think that flag is flapping like the wind is blowing uh, toward our nose. But we're pointed. We're pointed in the 1-6. We're pointed in the direction we're going to be taken off in. But according to that flag, we would be, we would be taken off with a tailwind. But I think if we can find a windsock. Yeah, so the windsock is modeled correctly to blow the correct direction. The flag is not. So 
The windsock confirms we're pointed in the correct direction and we want to take off. We want to taxi up behind us and, uh, and then take off in the direction that we're currently facing. So this flag flags uh, either modeled incorrectly, not, mo mo not modeled to uh, go to the direction it's supposed to go, um, or it's just mounted on the scenery, it might be mounted on the, on the scenery backwards, facing the wrong way. Anyway, a little bit of interesting X-plane detail for you. Where we go in the checklist? Uh, I think we're good to go. Let's go ahead and start uh, our taxi out here. Uh, I, no, I did not set comm frequencies. Yeah, we need to be on 122.8, and we need to be making some position announcements as we start to taxi out, especially because we're going to be occupying that runway for kind of an extended amount of time. And where in the heck are we now? Zakynthos? Zakynthos traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor will be back taxiing out to runway 16 for an, a VFR southeast bound departure, Zakynthos. It's never too early to start transferring fuel. Yeah, Wheel Spank, we did a lot of that on that last that last flight in the CJ4, and I, I don't know if you've ever noticed um, or never ever, ever been around for some of our Douglas flights where I've kind of done the same thing. I, I need to come up with a better system of just, like, tying a string around my finger or something when I'm running an asymmetrical fuel configuration because I... It, it's not that that's that CJ4 trip was not by far the first time I've forgotten that I was uh, moving fuel back and forth but man that was that was pretty that was pretty impressive uh, it was an pretty pretty impressive lapse of procedure on that one but yeah we've seen it happen in this DC3 many times I'm gonna try something a little different with the fuel configuration this time at our stopover to see if uh, I can uh, avoid the same fate. I was looking at those traffic, I was 514 Delta Victor now entering runway 162, backtrack for a uh, southbound, southeast bound departure. Let's look at those. So entering the runway, actually, the anti-collision lights should have come on. Uh, landing lights kind of more for when you get takeoff clearance, but we'll go ahead and pop it on now. Pito heat and fuel pumps can not come on. Cows can go into trail. Hydro pressure is checked, and those are the white gauges there just to the left of the cow flap levers. Everything's looking good. Flight attendants, prepare cabin for departure. Do want to do a run-up as well. Not that we want to occupy the runway for any more length of time than we need to. I guess I, the standard procedure, I guess, would have been when, when we got these back taxi situations or backtrack situations. I guess the standard procedure would be to do the run-up at the whole short line, then enter the runway and backtrack, right? I guess if you're trying to minimize your time on the runway. But uh, real-world time in Greece right now is probably what? Two in the morning, three in the morning. Woo! Did you enjoy that little roller coaster ride? A little, little uh, Mad Hatter uh, teacup ride? Uh, that's no space station work, that's a moon. All right, so we will hold the brakes. We'll run the manifold pressure up to 30. We're going to flex the prop lever up and down three times. Once. Twice. And three times. Yeah, no, no more. No, yeah, yeah I always, always pretty much simulate pretend daytime no matter what. We'll do the right magneto down one. You'll hear the engine will go slightly out of sync there. You hear the wobble of the uh, dissonance there. We'll go down another notch. Okay, we'll go back up. So the magnet, each of the engines runs on a redundant set of magnetos, which is essentially like, uh, kind of like your distributor, sends the electrical charges to the engine. 
And when you switch down to one set, just to the left or the right, sometimes there's a little drop in the RPMs. But as long as the engine doesn't sputter and die, you know, your magnetos are all working. Nice to have a redundant set just in case you have one failing. Yeah, yeah, no. Moondroke. And I did the Star Wars reference there for you too, Mark. So there we go. We're all, we're all caught up. All right. Tailwheel can go locked. And I think we are ready. Zick hit those traffic Douglas 514 Delta Victor now to parting runway 16. VFR southeast bound. Zick hit those. All right. Brakes are off. Let's set manifold pressure 45. There she is. This is a flaps one departure, which is not typical for a runway of this length, but I kind of just prefer the way the plane handles on a flaps one, so I do it for all situations, more or less. So just note that that is not textbook. I, I am not a real world pilot, but I do try to point out when I'm bending real world procedure. Sometimes it's intentional, other times not. Gear coming up. hundred feet. See that radio altimeter? At least I can see that radio altimeter. I don't know if you guys can see that. It might be blocked by my logos and such. But as that gets up through 400, we'll pull the flaps in. And we'll uh, give it a little bit of up trim. And start building towards that at 110, kind of that BY. Pull the Engine power down to 25 on the RPMs, 40 on the manifold. There we are. We can get the fuel pumps off. Take note of our time. It was uh, well, more or less, I mean, so we're a couple minutes after. I said 8.30. A couple minutes after, but we're good there pretty much. And, uh... Navigation plan has us going on about a 101. So we'll make a uh, make a left kind of 45 turn out here. As it get those traffic Douglas 514 Delta Victor is clear runway 16 on a left 45 VFR southeast bound departure. As it get those slash call. So we'll just park it on kind of that one zero there, indicating approximately a 100 heading. It looks like we might be a few degrees off from the magnetic compass already. Or maybe just they just, they, the magnetic one does kind of bob and weave around a little bit when you turn. So yeah, it looks like it's stabilizing in more or less to a 100. Zero zero. And I had filed 3,500 feet cruise altitude, but it looks like we've got kind of a little bit of a low uh, cloud deck here, so we might need to just kind of level it off at 2,000 until we get out from under it. So we'll plan on that for now. I don't yet have anything on that NDB. But I'm not going to panic about it yet because... No, we, we can kind of still see land here. I'm not too upset about the navigation plan. I think we'll be fine. Oops, overshot 2000. Yeah, we're, we're kind of flirting with getting into the clouds there, so let me get it back down to 2000. Pull the, pull the power down. 23 on the RPMs, 34. On the manifold, kind of like to use those as my cruise settings, 23 and 34. And the manifold pressure always dips after I let go of it. So, get it set there. Looks like we still got to down trim a little bit. As we come up to cruise speed, you're going to add more and more down trim because the plane's going to want to. Uh, want to put itself back into a climb when it picks up speed. Alright, 
There's 2,000. I think we might even let auto have it here for a little bit. But if I do that, that means I got to spin the target heading around to a uh, 100. Well, now I've got it into a consistent uh, slight descent. Back up to 2,000, make sure we're kind of tracking that 100. I like to get the plane nice and stable before I hand it over to uh, autopilot. To the best of my limited abilities, abilities that is. Heading still keeps kind of drifting to the left. So, well, uh, there we go. All right, so that's a little bit more on. A little bit more on one zero zero. Still about sixty feet low. There we go. Now I think we've got it. I think we can give it over to auto now. Autopilot on, level, and heading. And I think we can go ahead and get the cowls closed, or mostly, oops, that's open, mostly closed, I guess. We know in this plane we have to run them slightly open just because the uh, cylinder head temps will run away if you run the cowls closed like you should. Pop these into auto lean. If I can just find them, yeah, there we go. The spot that they kind of click into there. There we go. And what else? So we got a 100 heading. We got 2,000 feet for now while we're ducking under the cloud deck. We got the, the manifold pressure still dropping there, so we'll bump it back up to where it's 34. Cylinder head temps are climbing, but we will watch that. And I think what we can do for now, guys, is we'll go ahead and get it into uh, the aux tanks. So we'll pop that into right aux. Pop this into left aux. And uh, run through our fuel gauges. Let's see how we wind up with the uh, right mains. Just, uh, just about 81. Left is about 85, so there's about a four gallon differential there. I'm not going to worry about it because every time I do, like I said, I tend to forget that I'm worried about it and then I transfer all the, all the fuel from one side to the other and make it worse than it was. Four gallons, we'll live with it. And we got just under 100 in uh, the aux tanks, so we'll leave that gauge in aux for now so we can kind of keep tabs. There she is, guys, the Aeroworks Douglas DC 3 with our custom Slant Alpha Adventures livery. Thank you to our friend. And aforementioned Northwest Orient. And that's my grandfather's name up under the nose cone there, up under the captain's, uh, captain's and first officer's window. He did not fly DC-3s, but he did fly in uh, World War II. He did fly Hellcats, Wildcats, and Corsairs. Now, check this out, guys. We are not still receiving this NDB on 401. However, we are crossing this little peninsula here. So visually, I think we are on the right track. Navigationally, things are not going according to plan just yet. We see the NDB is tuned to 401, which is indeed what's on the chart. But that needle still parked firmly in the three o'clock position, which is its resting position, indicating that it's not receiving any kind of a signal. So I don't think. Well, like I said, I don't think we'll panic. I think we're 
you know, visually able to confirm we are exactly where we expect it to be at the stage of the flight. And uh, so if we put a point there, we can see that we've got nine miles to go to that to where that NDB should be. So it should be about three minutes away. So by 8.45 Eastern Time, and we can see that we're going to enter the coast slightly north and west of a little ridge line here. And there should be a stream and such that we can follow kind of to the east. And I do think I see up ahead that little ridge line that we're entering west of. So if there's kind of a little stream somewhere along in there, we'll follow it out to the west. So I'm a little, little concerned that that NDB is not active, but it doesn't seem like it has cost us anything. It just makes me wonder what else is not going to work later on. <laughs> but I think there's our little stream right there. It does, in fact, I mean, if you look at it on the map here, it does, in fact, if we, it comes it off the coast and curls back toward us and then goes off to the east. So I think that is indeed the precise one we are supposed to be looking at. So there we go. Let's let's go ahead and turn to follow it, guys. And the cloud deck's still kind of hovering just above us. Yeah, well. If, I, if I'm seeing it correctly, then it's kind of going up and then off to the right. And I think that little valley way there is where we're aiming. Right? It comes in and it kind of goes back to the right. Yep. Yep, that's what I'm seeing. We get super ambitious in a little bit. I mean, once we start the real canyon portion of the canyon run, I will pop Auto's controls off and do a little manual flying. We got Not JK looking for one of our raffle tickets. Uh, did you bring your telescope? I always bring my downwind sim binoculars. Captain Scientist. There we go. Wigglespank says, the last time I rode in this plane, we went to the Faroe Islands, so that's been a while ago now. How long ago was that? So Faroe Islands was August 24th. That was leg number eight. We are currently on leg number 30 of this tour. So Wigglespank hasn't joined us for one of our Douglas overseas trips in a little bit. Yeah, we have taken this plane on this tour. Forty five hundred miles since then. I guess um, 
I guess since we're just kind of cruising along, might be okay to just pop the fastened seatbelt lights off. I think we did the outer lean and cows and, and fuel tank, so I think everything else on the cruise checklist is done. So I think we're good, guys. Gonna have to try to land on that crazy runway. Which one was that? The, the Faroe Islands one, Wigglesback, or the, or the one we're doing tonight? I think both of them have uh, their own doses of crazy. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruise altitude, our intermediate cruise altitude of 2,000 feet. Nice scenic flight for you today. We have turned off the fastened seatbelt signs. Your cabin crew is going to come around shortly with a fine selection of Red Bull products and Hero and Suvlaki. So relax and enjoy the flight. Good evening is here. How have you been, man? It's been forever. Talking about the things that have happened a long time ago. Have you found Sky Vector to work well outside of the U.S.? I know everyone always says it's not great. Um, yeah, so that NDB, and I don't know if that's just, uh, it's just been decommissioned since the chart was made, uh, or if the Sky, if the uh, X-Plane scenery is out of date, I don't know. Uh, the answer to the question, good evening, is that the Sky Vector charts, the VFR charts outside of the U.S. are very, very watered down. So, like, if you come up here into Britain, you can kind of see all these control zones are, are delineated, so you have a sense of what's where, but you don't really have a sense of what's Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, uh, and Delta. It's not real well marked. And the if you've ever seen the real-world VFR charts for Great Britain, there's a ton more detail on those than on this. So it, so the charts work fine, it, to, to put it the way you wrote it, uh, yeah, the way you said it, but they're definitely very watered down from the level of detail that you would get from that country's uh, VFR sectionals or the equivalent thereof. All right, guys, I think we're going to go ahead and pop the autopilot off my airplane, whether uh, whether you like it or not. And we're going to attempt to follow this road and river here. And the only reason I think it might get dicey is because we do have kind of a low cloud deck to uh, contend with. And Good Evening says, yeah, some examples of European VFR charts, they're very complicated compared to the U.S., and there's lots of specific approach directions. Yes, VFR flight in general outside of the U.S. is nowhere near as, uh, as free and open as it is in the U.S. It's much more restricted. And... Uh, the sky vector sectionals, VFR sectionals, like I said, and, and it's because it's because the sectionals in the U.S. are public. Um, they're you know, publicly freely available. Outside of the U.S., the various um, aviation authorities typically charge for those charts, so the sky vector can't just publish them for free, right? It's that it violates the, the license agreement when you buy the chart. Can't just, can't just let everybody have it for free. So Sky Vectors kind of has their hands tied, but you know what they've done is, is just produce a simplified version, I guess is the word I'm looking for. That's useful for sim pilots, but probably not for anybody else. I think we're still following our little river here. We're kind of uh, dancing in the dark, walking in the park, and reminiscing. About a 100 heading now, so where does that put us? Yeah, I've got a. So it looks like. Yeah, 100, and then kind of a 133 once we get down into that valley. So where is the, which is that valley? Is it there? Am I, am I too far to the north already? Well, 
I'll tell you what. If I'm too far to the north, it doesn't matter, because I'm going to shunt over to the west and pick up that ridge and follow it down to the south, and we'll end up where we intended to be either way. But boy, the uh, clouds are kind of creeping down on us guys, aren't they? have another NDB we can tune further down. I know there's an airport down there. Yeah, there's an airport down there, but there's not like an NDB with it. I think we'll be fine. Once we get kind of running parallel with this ridge line. Pardon me. <laughs> yeah, I'm kind of asking that question. Where am I? <laughs> Another one of those streams where I'm very tempted to just stop and ask for directions. <laughs> so I don't know that I took the path that I charted out here. Actually, if I'd gone down that other valley, it might have been a dead end. It might have been this dead end here. It might have been that dead end. Uh, I think I maybe took way kind of more of a northerly path here, but I think I am... I think I am where I intended to be. <laughs> Dave. Dave wants me to fire up the GTN. I will not do that, sir. I would rather be lost. But we did say, I mean, if we if we go by the, the lakes that I plotted here informally, you know, we did say that this part... Uh, whoa, 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 whoa. Okay. Yeah, we did say that this part is about a 130 heading, and then further down here, oh, uh, you know what, I'm not down at that part yet, I'm still up here. Uh, what I gotta hope that I'm not is... Hope that I haven't taken this so wide that I'm now going into this. I kind of feel like that it might be what I'm doing. Fuel is free. Well, the the, uh, the good news there is I've got enough for this leg plus the second leg. So we do end up having the refuel of course at Porto Healy, if you saw the picture of that thing, there there ain't no there's no place there to refuel. So yeah, I'm kinda come back to the west, guys. I think I've overshot that valley. And I should be timing this as well. That's part of the problem is I should be keeping track of our position, not just by eyeball, but by stopwatch, and I'm not doing that. I'm not doing a very good job of that. So I think there's the valley that I meant to go down. So we'll give that a give that one a whirl. little shoot to, to point my nose down and I'm gonna have to do like a stall turn to get in it <laughs> unless I widen it out a little bit here
The swamp donkey is with us? Yeah, exactly. That's what exactly we're uh, flying today. And uh, so it's uh, it's the Aeroworks swamp donkey, and it's on the Orc Forum as a C-47. But we always uh, we always kind of just colloquially refer to it here as a DC-3. Not much difference of note except for the passenger cabin. So yeah, we always we always just kind of presume that it's a DC-3. Let me let me well, let me make sure that I'm not going to hit a rock up ahead here. Give you a nice outside view of it. There she is, bud. Got a very distinct sound. Yep, and this um, this freeware version of it, it's the Aeroworks Douglas C-47 Skytrain for X-Plane 11, and it's got a beautiful sound pack. Um, I want to be going on about a 130, so I guess I've got to take this left here. <laughs> yeah, I've... I'm not at all convinced that I'm where I think I am, guys. We might be doing some impromptu exploring on this leg, guys. Yep, yeah, yeah, we're in X-Plane tonight. I do, I fly a mix of X-Plane and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 on the channel. And I, and I don't always flip the category because uh, it's 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 pretty interchangeable here on this stream, which one I'll be flying. All right, so we're on about a 130. No, we're on about a 90. So where the heck are we, guys? Am I lost up in these canyons up here? Gonna need some more snacks. Well, it's gonna get really interesting if I uh, fence myself in with the clouds. It's gonna get really interesting. That seems to be what is about to happen. Yeah. Alright, well, we're, 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 uh, we're in danger, guys. Yep, this is how VMC pilots, this is how, yeah, the VFR pilots kill themselves. This will be interesting. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, we're not out of the woods yet. <laughs> A failure of epic proportions. That was a failure of epic and near complete proportions and near fatal proportions. It will be very interesting later on to look at the ground track and figure out where I where I strayed from my uh, intended path here. All right, I think. Uh, I think I kind of know what I did. I think I kind of wound up way, way further east than I intended to be.
<laughs> Colonel Fork says, you did a good job saving it. No, I got lucky saving it. I got lucky. Let's 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 call a spade a spade. <laughs> Sometimes better to be lucky than good. At least you're not part of an aluminum trail. Nope, not so far. We've learned <laughs> showing over yet. Yeah, this will be really interesting to see the ground track because now I'm over on the west shore and I'm very far off of where I intended to be. So we might do that, guys. We might, once I get it back to where I'm... Uh, kind of stable and safe, we'll, we'll, we'll kind of skirt the coast down. Yeah, I can see it from the map where I am now. So once we reorient ourselves, I'm, I might just look to see what happened there on the cheat map. You know, again, I don't like using the cheat map to find myself, but now that I've found myself, I don't mind looking at it just to see what went wrong. And we can come back up to 2,000. Let's do that. Gonna be able to do 2,000. We might not even be able to do 2,000. Yeah, we'll park it at 2,000. We'll see how that goes. Okay. Three and thirty-four. Let's restabilize it. We'll hand the controls back to Auto. And uh, doing precisely due south, so we'll get my drivers lined up. All right, there we are. We're level at two thousand. Autopilot on. Level and heading mode. I can see where I am. Okay, so now we're 23 and 34. Temps and pressure's all still looking good. Fuel's still looking good. All right, and I can see that where we are now is that we're tracking down this way. Tracking down this way, and I'm either going to cut in on that side or I'll just follow the coast and cut in that side and, and just rejoin that way. Well, <laughs> go around that. But the question is, where did I go wrong up here? Let's let's take a look. Hmm. It, it almost looks like I was in the on the right path. Yeah, I was on the right path. I just didn't realize how much the elevation was going to change there. But I think the cloud cover was going to make it prohibitive anyway, so. Go do a touch and go on the aircraft carrier if you want. Yeah, I think we'll, uh. Yeah, so that's funny. I was, I really, I really was on the plan that I intended to be. I just didn't realize how much of an elevation change it was going to be with respect to that cloud layer, so. Okay, good to know.
<laughs> Alright, so at this point we're going coming around the south side of the mountain. that work there. Kind of cut through there. Give it a shot. So we can cut through there. So at the bottom end of that, we want to turn to about a 101. Well, is that where we are? I think we're probably up at this one here. that point all together. Just go straight on a uh, 120. And maybe we're not there yet. Kualop says you'll be force fed until 2 a.m. if you ask to have your euros lined up in Greece. I'm not 100% sure I'm catching the reference there. Follow up. Is it because of the way I'm saying it? Probably. <laughs> or is it because I just threatened to scatter an airplane all over their hillsides? <laughs> Part of what led me to do this tour in the first place was because I'm like very, very American. So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to get myself out into some different places. And of course, I've always said that like my, my impeccable pronunciation of Hawaiian and Alaskan place names is often on display on this channel. So we're about at 150 now, go down the ridge here. Yeah, okay, so I see where I am now. I'm not quite as as far south. We're kind of, uh, kind of here right now. We flip that into, uh, 4x. The Greeks have a dish they call euros. Yeah, that's what I was referring, but that's what I was referencing earlier. About a thousand feet above ground, ground elevation right now. Yeah, we're definitely getting boxed. So this, this is one reason, guys. It's one reason that uh, a lot of times on this channel I don't do as much VFR flying as I do general aviation IFR flying. You know, VFR is fun because you get to do things like canyon runs and you know land on. Uh, land on little bush strips and stuff like that. But it also means you get into these battles where you're you're fighting the cloud cover. You know, you're fighting getting boxed in by the clouds. And we've run into that numerous times on this tour. And Greenland was a was a really bad example. Where we just got we got got boxed in and almost kinda had the same this is not the first time that we've had that kinda had to pull that kind of maneuver to save our you-know-whats on this tour. And uh, so if I'd gone IFR, well, first of all, Porto Healy doesn't really even have any kind of nav aids associated with it. Like we said at the beginning of the stream, it is like barely a place. All 
Alright, so as we get to the south end of this ridge, I think I see the spot where we can duck through. Yeah, that was uh, Kuala, That was our in-flight meal today. It was Yerlis and Suvlaki. And again, my Yankee pronunciation of all of the above. <laughs> skimming the ground as we go over here, but the cloud cover's not giving us much choice. What is our altitude? Less than a thousand. What is it over this ridge? Less than 500? Maybe. <laughs> well, leg two is going to be much more of an open over water leg. Plenty of room, Melvin says. Yeah, we're doing good, man. Oh, who wanted to, uh, who wanted to crack the door and take a smoke real quick? You guys can, uh, go ahead and do that. If I visited Greece by light airplane, I might need to fiddle the weight and balance numbers. Alright, I think we are clear now of this little sub ridge and should be heading kind of on a 120. Yeah, and headed out to the shore. Okay, so we're good. Aside from skimming the treetops, we're good. Alright, that's all that's all the smoking we're doing. made it. We lived. Not because I did anything smart, but <laughs> it's just funny to me. Funny to me that I did actually find the right ridge, but man, we just got boxed right in by the cloud cover, didn't we? I was. I was headed right down this, the right down the one I intended to. I don't know what exact path I took over that little mess, but... <laughs> Alright, so once we clear the shoreline here, let's plot a point there. 26 more miles on that 120. So that's... We divide that by 3, that's 8 minutes and change. And we're going about 3 miles a minute here. And so not only does Sky Vector say we should be on a 120 heading, but if we're looking for like a, a low spot in the ridges ahead, it does kind of look like you know if I had to guess, it does kind of look like we're aiming for that, wouldn't you say? I guess the only solace I can take at the end of the night, no matter what happens, the only solace I can take is that whatever, regardless of the outcome, this is all 757's Mai's fault. <laughs> that much we can say with certainty, right? You're joining late. We're doing this tour that we call Douglas Overseas. I'm going to give a nice uh, opportunity since we got 
nice open water ahead of us here to get a little bit of a better shot of the airplane for those of you who aren't familiar with the stream and aren't familiar with the plane. It's the Aeroworks Douglas DC-3 for X-Plane 11. Yes, we are in X-Plane 11 tonight. So I do interchangeably fly Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 and X-Plane 11 on this stream, and I, I don't always change the category, so apologies for that. But we do have Ortho 4 XP scenery in, installed throughout the region here. So it is nice photorealistic scenery. It is uh, not quite as 3D digitally rendered as Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, but it's darn close, especially from altitude. It almost looks as good. But this is X-Plane 11. We don't know of a, of a quality DC-3 available for Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 just yet, although we know that uh, the developer group called Aeroplane Heaven is working on one. Working on one, in fact, that looks very, very much like this one as far as the interior goes. Our water, water just goes smooth. Our water texture just disappeared. Did you guys see that? Kind of bizarre. But at any rate, I'll tell you what, let's. Let's drop just a hundred feet. Just very nervous about those cloud cloud bot bases there. But at any rate, so aeroplane heaven is working on a DC-3 that looks extremely similar to, similar to this one. Similar enough, I mean, different enough that we know it's not this very model ported over, that it is its own model, but similar enough that it's certainly modeled off of, or based off of, a visual, you know, the visual reference was a DC-3 of a very similar vintage of the one that has formed the basis of this model. So then we're going to level it at 1900 as we, uh, I'm just very nervous about this cloud deck, guys. I'm tempted to get X-Plane 11, says Bickles Bank. I think it looks pretty good. It would be nice to have this and Microsoft Flight Sim. I, I, I can't, um, I can't recommend it enough, uh, Bickles Bank. I can't, uh, say enough good things about X-Plane. I think the planes handle very, very nicely, especially if you do general aviation flying. I think there's there's still a, a pretty good selection of quality uh, airliners, vintage and modern, in X-Plane. I think, um, I think, I just really think you can't go wrong. It's not, it's, and it's not horribly expensive. I mean, I know everyone's means are different, but the beautiful thing about X-Plane is all this ortho scenery that we have installed, all free. It's a tool. It's a freeware tool that you download and install. And then you select exactly which tiles you want to run, and it downloads uh, publicly available ortho imagery and uh, and publicly available um, ground elevation data, and it creates this scenery uh, completely for free. And like I said, it doesn't render the 3D buildings and such as quite as nicely as Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, but. Man, at any kind of altitude, you'd be hard-pressed to tell the difference. But the planes fly a lot nicer. The menus, the control setup is a whole lot easier. Menu navigation is a whole lot easier in X-Plane. I mean, I'm not, I'm not dissing Microsoft Flights in 2020. It's an amazing piece of software. But, you know, every different package has its, you know, has its pros and cons. And the pros of X-Plane are ease of navigability and the colossal freeware market of quality add-ons that you get, that you can find. The uh, little airport pack that we were just at at Zakynthos was a freeware download for, for X-Plane. Um, Porto Healy is really not much aside from a dirt strip, but uh, our destination tonight, Crete, another freeware download. So there's, a, there's just a ton of quality freeware out there for X-Plane 11. And that's, to me, that's the turning point. I mean, that's what makes the value exponential for, for what you pay for it, which, like I said, is a pretty reasonable price to begin with. But 
Uh, this plane, this plane is freeware. This is the AeroWorks A E R O W O R X, and uh, pretty, pretty fully modeled. I mean, there's a couple little tweaks. Uh, one little tweak that I made with the help of a friend um, to the tailwheel lock. And there's one issue with the fuel gauge that uh, I had to download a little patch from the developer for, uh, and he never, never got around to updating the, uh, updating the plane. I think it's he, he updated it um, last August, and then it kind of he said he was going to do a one update a month for the next several, and it kind of fell off of his radar, I guess. You know, again, that's what you put up with when you're looking at freeware. You, you're not, uh, you're, 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 ro you're resting on someone's free time and uh, free time that they may or may not continue to have, so. So I'm not gonna begrudge it at all. It's, it's, it's darn near fully functional. I mean, it, you know, it's not, it, everyone has the kind of their own definition of study level, right? It's, it doesn't really model failures. It can, so, to some extent. I mean, X-Plane 11 has its own, you know, native failure model, failure engine. You can do some of that stuff. Just uh, eyeballing this, the headings, you know, the, the direction, the, the uh, magnetic compasses were on a 125. This looks like, uh, yeah, it might be a degree off. This looks like it might be a degree off as well. Get that sorted out. Wigglespank says, I don't have a lot of experience, but I enjoy the 152 and 172 in Microsoft Flight Sim, and the one in X-Plane 11 looks nice too. Yeah, I fly. You've seen on stream when we've done our Bush League flights, um, a, a, uh, a mod kit for the Cessna 172 that turns that into a Bush plane, puts nice big Bush tires on it. And in fact, that comes with both a trike and a tail dragger variant, which of course I typically fly the tail dragger because it's a little bit more challenging. <coughs> that too is a freeware mod. So much good freeware stuff for this sim. Can't, uh, I mean, it's, a, it's nearly endless. Alright, if I can't find the gap in this hill, this hillside here, you know, we will just kind of go down and around. I feel like I'm still kind of looking right at it. But again, the, the clouds are making me nervous. What was our ETA to our first destination, by the way? We had said just over an hour, and we took off more or less 50 minutes ago. Yeah, I think we're running just a little bit behind because of our detour. What's our current ETA? We've got another 30. We can delete that point. 35 and 30. And then what's that distance there? Five. So another 70 miles. 70 miles at about three miles a minute. Thirty-three, right? No. Twenty-three. Twenty-three minutes. Cow flaps. I think we can close the cow flaps all the way. We're at lower altitude, so we're probably pushing these engines a little less hard than we ordinarily do. So that's why we're able to run the cow flaps a little more closed. Temps and pressures all looking good. does look like maybe we could climb a little bit here. My airplane, heaven help us all.
I don't think this is definitely our our gap coming up. Yeah, well, man, it's almost a cut through, almost a complete cut through. Get ourselves in too much trouble with altitude here. Shoot for this little stream bed. We don't have to go any really, really any higher than three thousand. Yeah, so Wigglespank, I think there's just a, there's two different philosophies when it comes to the two, the two pieces of software. And, and this is my generalization. This isn't, you know, this isn't based on any official documentation or, or, uh, or what have you. I, I, so this, this is my opinion. But I think you'll find there's a prevailing sense what I'm about to say is, is probably going to be hard to dispute. X-Plane 11 Balance with us, Balan. Listen to what I'm about to say about the two sims here and see, see, see what you know about them and what you, what you can maybe say that you agree or disagree. X-Plane 11 is at its heart a simulator that has been released out onto the market and if you want to make it more game-like you may because it's infinitely expandable with plugins, Lewis scripts and whatever else you want to add to it to make it more game-like but it is at its heart it was born out of a research project in fact the name of the company that makes it is Laminar Research it was born out of a, uh, ex, you know, a, a, a simulation in what they call blade element theory. Basically, they're trying to come up with a model of how to predict airflow over a surface, and that it essentially became the genesis for their simulator. So it started as a simulator and has become more of a game now that it's in commercial release. I think Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is at its heart a game that wants to be a simulator but its roots are that it's a game uh, I'm not sure what the thing is trying to do with altitude why is it pitching up and down like this if it doesn't sort itself out I will uh, what this ramp and pitching up and down is all about. Alright, my airplane again, guys. And we are supposed to be on about a 080. So, Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 has those features like the logbook that pops up when you shut the plane down. I don't want that. You know, a real and I'm a uh, guy, and of course, take it with a grain of salt. I'm not a real pilot, but I'm I'm trying to do you know, what my my purpose in in flying is to fly as realistically as possible. I'm not looking to be on a leaderboard. I'm not looking to rack up hours. I'm not looking to accumulate stats. Um, so I don't need the little logbook that pops up when you shut the plane off. I wish I could skip that. But Microsoft Flight Sim 2020's developers put that in there because, oh, it's, it's cool. Gamers want that stuff. They want to see how their, 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 their stats are tallying up. No, I don't, but, you know, I don't have a choice. 
it's a game it's a game feature um, that's one example the whole um, the menu bar at the top of the screen that, you, that automatically pops up every time you move the mouse around now we have a mod now that that suppresses that which is awesome but again that's a very game like interface I don't want that on my screen unless I need it so again, it's it's a, just a fundamental difference in the two platforms. X, you know, X Plane wants to be more simulator-like, and Microsoft wants to be more game-like. But they both have reasons to try and cross over and meet in the middle. So that's my take on it, guys. And, and you know that may or may line up with what you think about it or believe about it. But basically, I think X-Plane is a simulator that you can mod to make more like a game, and Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 is a game that you can mod to make more like a simulator. To sum it up. Alright, so we're nice and stable and level here. Let's see if I can put the autopilot back on. level flight. Now why is it why is it pitching up this drastically? that was still climb power that might be one reason about to say, you know, I might end up hand flying the whole rest of the way here, but now I think I think the reason was I have the engine still at climb power. So let's see if I can get it to settle in at 2500 and uh, level out here. That's looking a little bit better. And I'm not in heading mode anymore, so that's why I'm not able to turn the plane. Okay, there we go. All right, I think we're fine now. I think I just didn't realize I was still in flying power there for a little bit. Engines, I was kind of monitoring engine temperatures there. Go ahead and close this back up a little bit. Do need to check on the fuel. Alright, let's see if I can. Now that I think that I got the plane back under control, let me see if I can catch up with the, uh, the comments. Valen says the trouble for me is X, with X plane is twofold. One is I'm not good enough at flying to notice the improved physics and, and plane accuracy. Fair point. And two, I'm not good enough at computers to really customize what I want in a flight sim. Yeah, that's fair too. That's why flight sim 2020 is is more for someone like me. Indeed, I, I agree with you there. Um, I, I think that lines up kind of with what I was saying. In matter of fact, um, so balances. I agree with you. I think that X Plane 11 makes more sense for someone like you, and flight sim 2020 makes more sense for someone like me. Says Balan. Yeah, I, I, I'm with you on that. Wiggle Spank says I think the price is good enough. That I'm willing to dive into it and appreciate appreciate everyone's thoughts. Yeah, I don't see Wigglespang. I don't think there's you know for those of us who, um, you know, who do have a little bit more of uh, you know, aviation experience, even though mine's virtual aviation experience. But I've been doing this virtual aviation thing for three decades plus. Um, I don't think there's any. There's no uh, there's no downside to having both.
And Dave Rendon says, I'm using X-Plane 11. I will start to do an instrument rating, and, and X-Plane 11 is going to be my pick. Flights in 2020 has great scenery, but I love my X-Plane. Yeah, and I think so that's 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 kind of... Um, you know, kind of another consideration is that uh, because X-Plane is more of a simulator than a game, um, it gets a lot of the instrument flying type stuff uh, more correct than Flight Sim 2020 does. All right, so I think we're rounding this point down here to the south and east. So really soon, as soon as we cl clear this ridge and we turn to a 004, you know, we should be going for about 30 miles, which should be about 10 minutes, and then we should be coming into Porto Healy here just a few. So as soon as we round this bend, be ready to make a hard left head up the coast. We'll see what see how it goes. We got 28 Gabriel with us. Gabriel, thank you very much for stopping in, and he's hit the follow button as well. Gabriel says, "Good night. How is how are your nav conditions?" We're doing VOR to VOR or other. So I'm kind of this is more of a visual flight right now. I'm navigating. Of course, we ran us into some issues with clouds. I think the clouds have now lifted, so uh, we kind of got ourselves boxed in by the cloud cover earlier. But we're doing this first leg here as just a more of a visual flight. So, uh, just navigating based on the coastline and so the ridge lines and stuff. We, we, we saw an instance earlier where that pretty much failed. I, was, I had intended I'll show you show you Gabriel we had intended to come down this valley here but we got boxed in by clouds and uh, so I had to do an emergency climb maneuver and come out I wound up coming out that way and so we wound up taking more like the path that I've drawn now that was plan A was what I just drew for you there and it didn't quite work out too well All right, I think we're ready to make this left turn here but other than that instance where we nearly died <laughs> yeah we've been doing this much more as a visual flight uh, not navigating with any kind of radio nav aids. Typically on this channel, though, we do a lot of uh, general aviation IFR flying, so typically on this channel we do use a lot of radio nav aids. And we will probably do more of that tonight on the second leg. The second leg uh, from Porto Healy down uh, to the southeast across this open water, we're going to definitely use some of these VORs. We're not going to navigate to and from them like, like on airways. But we'll definitely use some of these VORs to kind of corroborate our position as we go. And I'll show you how that's done. Some different radio navigation techniques you can use to keep track as you go. And so basically basically dialing in uh, maybe a 005 I think Sky Vector hits a 004 so just dialing in yeah we're gonna go right up the coast here maybe even do we want to kind of hug the coast or we do do we want to go a little bit to the east yeah we don't don't want to quite hug the coast we don't want to go up this way necessarily so we do want to kind of go out a little bit to the east at 30 miles on the 004, 30 miles, so it's 941 now. 30 miles will be 951 since we're covering about 3 miles a minute. And I think we can kind of see up ahead where we're headed here. So we'll press on just as we are. I'll do a quick run through the... Uh, yeah, we can, I think we can close up the cow flaps here, guys. 23 and 34 still seems to be set. Cylinder head temps are nice and cool, so we just closed up the cow flaps a little more. Temps and pressures the rest of the way are good. Still burning on the aux tanks. And, uh, yeah, so we know the right main's a little lighter than the left main, but we'll, we'll show you how we can fix that while we're on the ground at Portal Healing. Against the Aeroworks Douglas DC-3 tonight in X-Plane 11. Hey, we got a water uh, texture back. I'm not sure what happened earlier, but it looks like we got it now. So there she is, the Aeroworks Freeware Aeroworks Douglas DC-3 for X-Plane 11. 
So let me see if I can catch up with the conversation again, which has steamed on without me. So if you think you're an X-Plane 11 Pro, says wireless mouse. Wireless mouse, thanks for stopping back in. I remember you being here before. Thanks for being back with us. It's easy to underestimate how intimidating getting X-Plane 11 going really is. Hmm. I don't know. Wireless, I... Well, yeah, I mean, you might have to provide some examples. Oh, Ortho 4XP says it looks great, but when you look at the process of getting it... Yeah, Ortho 4XP was a complicated mess. I will give you that. I don't think X-Plane 11 natively is very complex. I think they make their menu navigation, control setup... I mean, look at control setup in Microsoft Flight Sim 2020 versus control setup in X-Plane 11, and tell me X-Plane 11 is not the vastly easier one to use. But I, I will grant you the point about Ortho 4 XP. Ortho 4 XP is the is the exception. The Ortho 4 XP is a complex mess. The Ortho 4 XP was is created to be super super flexible, with every option under the sun. And the problem with making something super super flexible and customizable is that every more every different option you build in makes the program that much more complicated to understand. So Ortho 4 XP definitely took quite a bit of research and tinkering with before I felt confident that I understood how to use it. So that on that point, wireless mouse, I completely grant um, your, your, your point. I think, though, outside of that, X-Plane 11, typically, and, and scenery mod, as far as like downloading scenery mods for X-Plane 11, um, extremely easy. Just drop it into your custom scenery folder, done. Do a little bit of reordering sometimes, yes. Uh, but again, I don't think that that customization is that difficult to understand. But, um, but yeah, I, I think that worth of four XP definitely. I give you that. Balance is for someone who first got into flight simming on X plane. I can't possibly agree more. Much steeper learning curve. So much steeper learning curve with the planes, Balan. I think that's a different point, though. I think that's a different point. Yeah, for trying to use the G one thousand in Microsoft. Uh, flights in 2020 makes me want to throw things, uh, is, says Wireless Mouse, on the other hand. So it is a trade-off indeed. Yep, absolutely. And Gabriel says, yeah, amazing to see this. Thanks for the information. Yeah, no problem, man. We're, um... Downwind Sim we were just talking about you, man. I don't think we named you by name, but I was just about to because I was talk about to talk about how uh, you were my Ortho 4 XP guru. You're the, you were the one that really helped me understand what all the different options on Ortho 4 XP were for. Okay, so we're heading up, and, and again, I said 940, so I think 950, we're going to be getting ready to pass this little island, go around the bend, and make our approach into Porto Healy. I don't know the runway numbers there, and there's no charts for this place. It is basically just a dirt strip. So there, I think, is the island that we're going to round the bend here. We do know that the field elevation there is listed as 70 feet. So we will just be descending soon to uh, to a pattern altitude of just about maybe 1,100 feet. Uh, good evening. Oh, good evening did mention Downwind Sim. So there you go. Downwind Sim's ears were burning. Uh, and he said, uh, Downwinson has the best video on using Ortho 4 XP I have ever seen. It helped me a ton. Yes, thank you. I, did, I had not yet seen your comment. Good evening, although you had said it a little bit ago. Um, but uh, I think you're spot on with that. Wireless Mouse says, uh, X-Plane 11 is indeed easy to start with, but when you want to mod it, uh, it can be a lot. Yep, I, 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 yeah, yeah I, think we're, I think we're in agreement there. Brick Copilot, of course, saying hello to uh, Downwind Sim, as is Captain Scientist. All right, guys. Um, do a real quick weather brief. We don't have any weather here at Porto Gila because, again, this is not on any current airport charts. So we'll just do our best to approximate weather conditions here. Temperature's 11, uh, so we think the low 50s, Fahrenheit, all right. Ladies and gentlemen, we're just about to start our descent into our first stop tonight of Porto Healy, so we ask that you return to your seats and fasten your seatbelts. Weather there is currently in the low 50s with 
uh, partly cloudy skies, and uh, we are unsure of the reported wind conditions there. The cabin crew is going to come around one last time to collect trash, take care of any last-minute needs. Thank you again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. All right, whoops, that's not what I meant to do. So I think we are just for preparation. We're going to get switch. We're going to switch the right engine into the left main and the left engine into the right main. That way, when we sit on the ramp with just the number two running, it's the left main that'll be bled down a little bit. And since the left main has a little bit extra in it, I think that should balance us out. So that's how we're going to handle the rebalancing situation so that I don't screw it up this time. Good fixings is here. Go ahead and get the seatbelt signs on. And the radio out has been set to 10x already, so I think we're, we're good. We're going to need to do kind of a flyover of this thing to get a, get a sense of its direction, pattern direction. I think we can go ahead and start our descent, though. So let's go ahead and pull the... Uh, and I am going to go ahead and make this my airplane, guys. Heaven help us. Once again, I've only almost killed us once tonight, so hopefully that's our quota for the evening. And as we come, as we come around the tip of this island, it should be kind of around to the northwest, and then we're essentially going to end up in a right downwind, if I remember correctly, when I kind of scouted this out. A few other things we can do. The mix can go back into auto rich. We'll put the cows into trail. Tailwheel is indeed locked. And we'll go ahead and get the fuel pumps on. A little bit early for the uh, attendance call. You can't exhaust all of the heaven help us on the first flight. Now I'm. Then we're going to need all the help we can get, Captain Scientist. I mean, you saw. You were here. You are one of the ones that will be kissing the ground when we get this thing down. I believe that the runway direction on this thing is northwest and southeast, kind of like 15 and 33, more or less. So I think as we make the left turn up ahead to kind of navigate up the, the channel, I think we're going to essentially be on a right downwind for it means we need to keep coming down though. Yeah, and we are well behind. We, we, we definitely took some detours on that VFR trip. The second leg will be much more straightforward. I think we'll be able to stick to the schedule a little bit better. Yeah, we had said that leg two was going to start at 11, I think. We're going to depart it at 10.50. Yep, yeah, we'll push, yeah, close the doors at 10.50. Sorry, 9.50 now, in other words. And it be wheels up at 10 o'clock Eastern Time. So, good fixings, yeah. He's asking, so 757 Spy turned us on to Greece, and he says, yeah, I know he flies there a lot. Um, yes and no. I mean, I had the idea of doing you know, kind of a Mediterranean island hopping tour. I mean, I guess you could say that came from his inspiration. Sure, why not? I mean, my goal was to kind of find a place to do some island hopping that I hadn't done 100,000 times before. 
you know, we, we've we've been up into the San Juan Islands and uh, the, the Pacific Northwest a bunch of times. And it's it's a gorgeous place. Um, I feel like though I've kind of seen, for my purposes, seen all there is to see there. All right, I think we're coming into it, guys. I think this oval-shaped lake. Yeah, there we are. There's our runway. So I think we're going to kind of do a quick chop and drop here. And a ray, uh, right, right down went. This is some slant alpha flying, indeed, below minimums. We're back on the uh, back on the core theme of the channel. We'll start getting props full forward. That'll help us slow down some. That'll also help us be ready at the command of some power if we need to do a go around. Which, looking at the uh, likes of this little third strip here, it may be likely. I am pulling power out though at the same time. Yeah, and I'm in a very high right downwind. I should be down, as so you really don't want to descend into a downwind leg. That's kind of a bad habit I'm in. Porto Hilly traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors in a high right downwind for the southeast bound runway Porto Hilly. So, again. <laughs> Acting only the taxi lights on. I never got those off, I guess. Everything else is looking good. Flight attendants, prepare capture for arrival. There's a thousand. And we're under, uh, under 120, we can go flaps one, and under 100, we can go flaps two here. So we're kind of catching up with the configuration. Uh, lost sight of it, but we know it's kind of right there. Yeah, okay, there it is. I see it. Right over the right wing. Might be off your screen there. But we see that little island that we're going to aim for as our, as our turn in point, so... I think we're good. Keep it at about 11. So the field elevation is 70 feet. I want to keep the uh, pattern altitude at about... 1100. Oh, I'm way slow. Way slow. Try to keep it back up to about 90. Right, there's 1100 feet. And I think we can go ahead and start our base turn. So there's 90 knots in flaps three. You guys can start putting some landing rate predictions in. Tiny little bush strip that we're landing on, so uh, predict accordingly. But uh, no bot command is necessary. If you're new to the stream, all we need is a number into the chat, positive or negative. We know you meet a descent rate either way. She is okay. Let's turn. Good fixings. Yeah, no, we're not on the competition from the other night. You don't have to tell us which of the two approaches will be the firmest. I guarantee you it will be this one. <laughs> Ballon wants to predict a specifically positive number. Ballon, Ballon believes we're going to touch down inverted on this thing. All right, let's get it down to uh, let's get it down to about 75 down final, 70 over the numbers. Go ahead and get flaps four in. Gears down in green. Flap set checked. We're at 75. I am. Looks like I am drifting a little left here, so we'll 
Put a little center line correction in. Runway is not exactly straight either. There's 70 knots. Let's see if we can keep that. It looks like it's coming up at us, so I'm going to level the thing out. Let the runway come up to us. Oh boy, oh boy. Well, 219, but I don't think my descent rate was actually that. I think uh, the runway was coming up at us to some extent. Uh, are we going to stop before it ends? Uh oh, I think we might be taking a swim. Um, can everyone move to the back of the plane, please? <laughs> um, yeah, you guys do the do me a favor. Hop out here. <laughs> Sheriff, this is no time to panic. This is the perfect time to panic! <laughs> I don't think I have thrust reversers in this thing. Alright, so which is going to be the better way to pivot, right or left, guys? Um, looks like it drops off pretty quickly both ways. Looks like it's a little flatter for a little bit longer on the right side. Okay, well, you guys can all, you know, kind of get clear and spectate. We're going to try and pivot this thing around. And I'm going to do this. Hmm. Right rudder, right brake, left throttle. Uh, yeah, no, that's not going to work. might be okay here. We might register another landing, but we might be okay. <laughs> Whew! That was fun. We might need a, re re need a replay on that. I think we need a replay on that, guys. What do you think? Oh, and you know what? What what killed me? I still had the tail tailwheel lock on. That probably would have worked a lot better if I'd remembered that.
Alright, it's all good. Parking brake is on. <laughs> Ish. It's got anti-collision. Landing lights, taxi light on. The well, taxi light can come off now. Heat don't heat. And fuel pumps can come off. Yeah, guys, remember to uh, remember to thank 757 Spy for this this uh, adventure tonight. This is all his fault, like I said. And uh, trying to trying to figure out where I can put it where it will stop rolling. <laughs> Good there. Think we're good there. Okay. All right. Let's uh, let me find out where I'm in my checklist just to get the plane shut down. And I'll tell you what, we're gonna leave it right where it is. We're gonna leave it right where it is because we have to see that again. Have to see that again. Let's disconnect from uh, disconnect from X plane or X pilot yeah X pilot for just a moment uh, yeah let's Uh, yeah, at that point, I was like dropping like a stone, and I'm like, oh my god, the runway is a crazy upslope. So I threw some power in and tried to tried to smooth out the arrival. Well, yeah, it wasn't really, honestly, for it being this, what it was, the arrival wasn't that bad. If I had only remembered to turn the tailwheel lock off at this point, did anybody, did anybody in the chat catch that? No? Predictions 169, 135, 1, 142, 188, probably was the closest with Morik. 98, 155, 101. Yeah, so I guess Mork was going to be the uh, winner there with the 188, I think he said. It wound up being two and change. And then let's... Um... Let's get a view of this epic maneuver here. If I had turned the tailwheel lock off, I think we would have been fine here. Yeah, Balan, aeroplane, aeroplane heaven is working on one. So that's then. That's where the left wheel goes off and the tail goes off. <laughs> the panic starts. Yeah, I don't think anybody caught it. 
Yeah, wheel spank, there is an add-on that you can get that allows you to do replays in Microsoft Flights. I don't know how good it is. Where death starts to look imminent. That's the VFR says, uh, I can link the freeware add on the chat. Yeah, absolutely. There's no link restrictions. Go ahead and put it up there, Captain. Thank you for being here, brother. There we go. That was when we were like, oh, we've got motion. We might absolutely, possibly not die today. <laughs> I told you we'd go airborne again. That's hilarious. No link restrictions. That one's... That one's going to be the exception. <laughs> Alright guys, so yeah, um... Flight, uh, flightsim.to has an add-on called Flight Recorder there that Captain VFR has just posted the link to. All right, guys. Well, of course, let's go ahead and uh, go ahead and let the replay play out there, and uh, are we back in live mode? Are we back in control of the plane? All right. That was an exciting flight, said Wigglespank. Got to see some mountaintops right out the window and an awesome landing. And uh, watching a DCC drifting on the side of the runway makes me feel weird. Indeed, guys. Oh, we, we do have our second leg, and it's going to be underway. I had said 10, 10 o'clock, and I think we're going to push that back to 10.30 Eastern Time because I do need to take a break out of the cockpit and refill the beverage. So we do have a second leg. I think it's probably not going to be quite as adventurous and exciting as the first one. It's going to be over open water but it will be much more of a chill flight and we'll get to show you how to use VORs that you're not navigating necessarily to or from to uh, plot your position as you go and keep track of your progress so we've got some some kind of more cerebral flight uh, than than this mess um, for the second leg we also need to kind of go through and check our we might need to put, put a little more fuel in this thing uh, well, yeah, yeah, we'll use autopilot. We'll focus more on the navigation. I, I tend to tend to hand fly the departures and the arrivals, but we'll use some autopilot for the uh, for the open water portion, just because we'll get get a chance to play around and show you the navigation. Uh, I guess not necessarily even intersections. Uh, Rafael, Rafael uh, Rafoso there is asking about some navigation uh, equipment, uh, navigation uh, techniques that we're going to show. Not even necessarily intersections, uh, Raphael, because there's not really any airways to speak of here. Well, there's some RNAV ones. Obviously, we're not using those, but we're just going to do some point, uh, yeah, some point references, some some distance radio references off of these VORs to plot our uh, plot our position as we go. So we'll show you that. We'll show you that. No worries. No worries. So that we were talking about that at the beginning of the show, Gabriel. This place is uh, is listed as LGHL on Sky Vector, but there's not a default spawn in point for it on um, in X Plane. It is just the Ortho <laughs> LGHL. If you look for that in X Plane, you will not find it. So uh, yeah, it's 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 a. I think you probably have to take off maybe from Milos here and uh, and join us. Yeah, man. All right, so we got the second flight coming up in just a few. Let's let's close this first one out. Um, we got the tailwheel taxi light off and parking brake on. Tailwheel is now relocked. We can so we set the transponder back into standby mode. Actually, just shut it off for now. Uh, we will go ahead and shut the left engine off only. That's going to be mix magnetos and generator. Seatbelt signs can come off. Of course, we let you guys out before we attempted that crazy maneuver, so you guys are not in the plane anymore anyway. 
Uh, we will go ahead and open the doors to let you guys come back into the plane when you are ready and uh, brave enough. We can reset the trim. Uh, yeah, get that back to uh, news nose neutral there. And uh, so we'll check on our field. And we know that our ETA was way off. Um, what we're supposed to have in the tanks at this point is 260 gallons. We might have to add a little bit here. What do we have? 70 and 70, so that's 140. So we need a, we need another 120. So we need 60. So and we've got 48. So we're about 24 gallons short. But we're going to end... We're going to end with 138. I think we're going to be fine. I think we'll be okay here, guys. We'll, we'll press on. The only way we're getting off this rock is to have to board again, says Good Fixes. Yeah, exactly. All right, guys. Well, I'm going to take a quick break out of the cockpit. I definitely need to go to the little, little pilot's room and, and uh, take care of some business over there after that fiasco. A couple, uh, couple of instances there during that flight where we needed to kind of uh, check ourselves before we wrecked ourselves. So, uh, sit tight. We'll be back into the plane in just a few. We'll give you a nice view of uh, Porto Healy, Greece here while we take our break. And just give me just a couple of minutes out of the cockpit, guys, and we'll see you in just a few. Which way do we want to look? We want to look over the town. Yeah, we'll do that. There we go. That'll work. All right. Enjoy. We'll be back, back with you in just a couple. back with you guys. So Gabriel's decided he's going to swim to lake two. That's fine. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. Alright, I'll tell you what. One thing, first thing we need to do kind of here is get back, let's get connected back into uh, that sim, although there's really nothing going on over in this part of the world. It's the dead of the night in, uh, in this part. Of the world. Oh, we got a Ryanair flying over us. Uh, 27,000 feet, so we'll wave to him as he passes over. 
but yeah, there we are. <laughs> Let's take it from the top of the checklist and see what damage we can get ourselves into for leg number two. Let's go ahead and send our flight plan on to uh, Vatsim. Let's get next pilot back over here and uh, file our flight plan. LGHL going to LGIR. We're heading down to the island of Crete. No alternate. Departure time I think is going to be 0230. We can make that. Time en route on this one's going to be an hour and 56. We got two hours left in the tanks. Cruise speed's going to be still going to be 180. Cruise altitude still 3500. VFR southeast bound is still fine. We are still slant alpha. We're still not a heavy and uh, that should cover us there. Uh, we do need to update that progress bar up top for you guys, though. Get a sense of the progress. And this is going to be much more of a straight shot. So uh, the progress bar will be a little bit more accurate as far as the time estimate. Because it is more or less a straight path. We'll show you on Sky Vector here. Leg number two. And we can uh, actually blank this out. Let's go LG, HL, LG, IR. Just to show leg two by itself. Because what we're going to then do is we're going to use... Uh, radio and distance references from these nearby VORs to plot our path as we go, and then we'll see, you know, each time we do that, we'll see exactly how much mileage we have left to go. So, some fun navigation type stuff that we can do once we are underway. Did we get all the uh, raffle ticket entries in? No, we owe controller Balamon. one. All right, let's get, uh, get that taken care of. Uh, furry co-pilot just told you about the Merchandise link if you want to oops, stop helping Windows. I didn't want to do that. Um, if you want to purchase any of this merchandise that's behind me, it's uh, up for sale on Redbubble. But again, but again, that's more for you than for me. I, I pulled the commissions on those down as, as, as far as I could possibly get them. So that's for you. If you want to support the channel, just, just honestly... As, and the subscriptions are super nice, and the, the donations and the cheer bits and the merchandise sales. I love it, love it, love it. Race Division checked back in while I was gone. Um, I love all the support, and this, all the support is what allows us to do our giveaways and our, you know, our monthly raffle drawing with, with the giveaways and such. So everything you guys give to me, I try to, to give as much of that as I can back to you. But the best way, to be honest, the best way you can support this channel is get the word out about what we do. Tell your, uh, tell your aviation friends about the crazy stuff you saw on the Slant Alpha channel. Have them watch the video back. Have them join us on the next stream. We have a lot of fun here. Pass the word. We'd love, love to, for you to tell the rest of the aviation, virtual aviation world about what we do here. That's the best way for you to support the channel. Alright. Back from the top. Progress bar updated. We know the weather. We're going to be taking off to the south and east. Uh, we don't really have, we don't know the altimeter setting here, but we know the field elevation is 70 feet. So what we're going to do is we'll set it by the, set it by the uh, field elevation. So there's 80, so 70 is about there. Yeah, all right, that's close enough. Uh, nobody to obtain our clearance with. We can go ahead and just assume we're VFR. And Mo Charlie is back on now. They have an ADF tuners. We're really not going to have any kind of uh, navigation needs on this leg. But I think just for purposes of determining our position, we'll maybe tune this VOR here. 117.2, I think is what that says. 117.2. And then 113.5, just to see if we can kind of cross-reference our position. 117.2. Might not be receiving anything on the ground on those. Oh, yeah, we are. And what was the other one? 113.5. So once we get airborne, we'll kind of show you how to how to corroborate your position on a chart. And uh, are we receiving NAV-2? No, NAV-2 is too far away. But NAV-1, we are, we are receiving it at 11, uh, 11 miles distance.
Uh, so, Captain Crunch, if you want to redeem, then it's uh, you press the little button at the bottom of the chat panel that tells you how. There you go. You got it. Never mind. You're all good. And you can, yeah, and you can keep doing that as often as you need to until you, as, as for whatever you got the points for. There you go. That's how that works, guys. Furry Copilot has given you the lowdown on that. Captain Crunch has shown you how it's done. So, uh, yeah, the exclamation point 2000 doesn't do anything, but the button right there by the uh, by the Alphabets logo will uh, help you out. All right, now, back to where I was, which was trying to get airborne by eight minutes from now. Nav and ADF tuners are set radio altimeter. I like to set the radio altimeter to one extra departure, so I'll use that when I get to 400 feet. When the arrow gets to four, that's when we'll go ahead and pull flaps in and uh, turn on course and reduce from takeoff to climb power. So that's why we have that there. The uh, radio so and the fuel conitor we just checked, so I think we're good to go. Uh, yeah, the raffle's going to be this coming Friday the 30th, so, uh, so four days away. Ladies and gentlemen, this is your captain. On behalf of Slant Alpha Airways, we'd like to welcome you back aboard Flight 514, continuing service to Crete. We will be departing here momentarily, expecting uh, a half an hour delayed departure from our initial departure time at the top of the hour. We'll be departing here, we think, at the bottom of the hour. So uh, we do apologize for the delay, but thank you for your patience and your bravery. Cruising altitude for the second leg, we expect to be... A nice scenic cruising altitude of 3,500 feet. And flight time once airborne we think will be about 56 minutes in the air. So buckle in and relax. We will be underway soon. Thank you again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. Your flight crew will come around with a nice selection of, uh, of under-the-table sedatives for anybody that needs them. Meanwhile, I'm taking stimulants here. The undocumented checklist item, as always, has been taken care of. All right, are we ready, guys? Let's get the doors closed. All aboard that's coming aboard. Anybody else is uh, elected to go ahead and swim behind Gabriel. Let's go ahead and get the uh, number one engine fired back up. That's going to be Mix. Magnetos. Fuel pump. Prime it. Clear it. And start it. Read abilities with us. <laughs> there we go. Oil pressure has come up right away. Fuel pressure, you can see, is artificially elevated because of the electric pump. But once we shut that off, generator on, we'll check and make sure that the fuel pressure settles into its normal reading, straight up and down. Yeah, so we're good to go. All right, headings probably are off by a few. So that's showing. So we're, we're not exactly wings level here. So I don't know how re uh, how reliable that magnetic compass is, but we'll just assume that it's reading accurately at uh, 120 on the nose. We'll go ahead and get that set there and there. And we'll just set the top to zero because we're going to hand fly the departure. What else we need to do? Check the flight controls. Flight controls are still all working, thank God. Uh, of course, again, again, we're not really checking the motion of the yoke. We got a little bit of uh, control glitch there, but we're okay. Um, not really checking the motion of the yoke as much as we're checking the outside controls, outside control surfaces to make sure that all of them move freely and uh, correctly. But uh, somebody out there will give us a big thumbs up and let us know that they have all done so and we're good to go. Uh, we did already neutralize the trim, but we'll double check it because that's where it is in our checklist. Yeah, we'll bump it up a little bit. Go ahead and set flaps one. Yeah, wheel can come unlocked. And the taxi light can come on. And I think we are ready. Port of Hilly traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor's taxiing out to the southeast bound runway at Port of Hilly. Maddie GG is here, checking us out from work. Thank you, Maddie. You missed kind of an uh, uh, sh shall we call it eventful first leg? Right, there we go. Somewhat of an eventful first leg. You might I'm having trouble getting it to go right, guys. There we go. You might want to. Oh, you did see that? Okay, you were lurking. That's good, man. I was gonna say you might want to check that one back out in the in the video on demand or. 
on the YouTube channel once it gets up over there. Spun it all the way around. <laughs> all right, we'll take it. It was a butt clencher, yeah, indeed. Now yeah, let's let's spin it back around here. Let's make sure we've got every inch of this runway. We're going to need every ounce of our short field technique spot on as well. Got as much of the runway ahead of us as we can. I think we'll go ahead and get the tailwheel locked. I know we're not perfectly lined up, but I'll get that sorted out when we get rolling. Um, so let's go ahead and so check our hydro pressure. Cows can go into trail, which they already are. Flight attendants, prepare cabin for departure. We don't need to do our run up. We uh, have taken the runway already, so we should have already gotten anti-collision landing lights on, taxi light off, pito heat on, and fuel pumps on. Port of Healy traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victor is departing on the southeastbound runway, the VFR straight out departure of Port of Healy. Alright guys, we ready? This is going to be uh, max power, short field takeoff, coming at you. Breaks off. Tails up. Oh, where we go? You're coming up. Let's pitch it to 80. All right, we're through 400. We'll go ahead and get flaps in and pitch down, get some speed built up, get up to our VY. Twenty-five and forty. Yes, yeah, so Balan with a tail tail dragger. Um, on a short field departure with a tail dragger, your goal is to get the tail flying as soon as possible because that reduces um, ground drag. Right, that reduces uh, ground friction from the tail wheel um, bouncing along. So as soon as you get that tail flying, you, you, you do. And uh, that helps you build speed on the uh, just the mains. And then uh, when you have enough speed, you go ahead and pitch up, get the mains up and off. A lot of times, too, you can, you can actually pitch up just a little bit and get the mains up and off, but stay in the ground effect if you got like an obstacle clearance to do. Oh, does it retract the mains? Yeah, so the mains come up kind of tucked in underneath there. That's that's as retracted as they go, and the tail wheel just kind of dangles there.
Alright, so let's get our navigation plan underway here now that we are safely away from our little bush landing adventure in Greece. Thank you again to 757 Spy for suggesting that insanity to us. That's probably definitely one of the highlights of the trip so far. Alright, so up, up, and away we are. We are climbing out and should be aiming at 4, and we did, get, did the part pretty close at 10.30. So should be uh, rolling out on about a 153 heading. And, oh, we're way, uh, we went way to the left somehow. Red Dragon's with us. How are you? Yeah, so there we are. We're, so we were going to go at a 153, and now that I've gone kind of up to the north and the east, I think we probably need to go more like a... maybe a 160, honestly. Possibly. We had said we were going up to 3,500, but now that these clouds are being drawn in, I'm kind of feeling cautious about that. Should I redeem my tokens today? So yeah, Red Dragon, the, the monthly raffle is going to be taking place on Friday, so I would say cash in what you got today, bud. You might be able to get one more on Friday, possibly, but uh, if, if you happen to miss the show on Friday, then uh, you know, certainly might be beneficial to you to just make sure you have in what you have in for today. Alright, uh, so there's 2,500. I don't want to go up another 1,000 feet because I don't want to be flirting with those cloud bases. So we'll level it out at 25. And I'll pull the uh, pull the power down. Oh, the one thing that we didn't do is we got up out of our got up out of our takeoff sequence. Go ahead and get these uh, fuel pumps off. Trimmed up to 2,500 here. 23, 34. 160 on the heading. Don't really care too much about the exact heading. We're gonna we're gonna cross reference our position. We've we can see that we've got the DME behind the the, the VOR and the DME from behind us, so we have the ability to check our exact position. I'll show you how we can do that in just a moment. So we don't really care too much about the exact heading right now. Just want to get it nice and trimmed out to 2500 on a nice even heading, stable heading. Spin the uh, target heading around here to about 160. Now this is an airplane, says Defective Crayon. Indeed. So let's trim it down to 2,500. We'll hand the controls over to Auto, and then we'll focus more on the navigation here. We'll catch up with a couple of procedural steps I've probably forgotten. I do think I want to get back into the aux tanks, probably. Uh, we've got the crossed up fuel configuration we've got to fix. All right, so autopilot on, level, and heading mode. And how are we? 23 and 34. We can bump a little bit of manifold pressure into it. The uh, cow flaps can come... Nope, I always do that in the wrong direction. The cow flaps can come closed. Mostly closed until we see how they settle in. We'll go ahead and get the mix into auto lean. And what else do we need to do? Let's um, we roll back through our checklist to get the lights all set. Oh, I never did get the fasten seatbelt lights on, but we're about to pop them off anyway. 
Can't believe I forgot that. Oof. You guys, you guys were pretty much all after that first leg. You guys were all pretty much buckled in, tied in, and lashed to the deck anyway. Uh, no doubt. Um, yep, I think we're good then. Yeah, we'll go ahead and switch. Let's let's check on the fuel configuration. So, on the on the ramp the first time, I ran the right main. Okay, so the left is a little lighter now, but that's okay. They're still within five gallons of each other, so I'm not going to sweat that. We'll go ahead and run the aux tanks then, right aux and left aux. Right engine to right aux, left engine to left aux, until they get down low, and then we'll uh, we'll switch those back up for our arrival. We should be okay. All right, let me just catch up again with a couple more procedural things. Let's see, we're now we're at cruise. Like I said, the fasten seatbelt sign can come off. The mix already went to auto lean. Fuel configuration was adjusted. Yeah, Balance is going to sue the airline for that first landing. I don't blame you whatsoever. But you didn't hear that from me. Ladies and gentlemen, we've reached our cruise altitude. We're going to level off intermediately here at 2,500 for the first portion of this leg. And we have turned off the fasten seatbelt sign. Your cabin crew is going to be coming around shortly with a fine selection of Red Bull products and downwind sim Spanakopita. So relax and enjoy the flight. Downwind Sim, that's as close as I can come up with for uh, Downwind Sim pies, but in Greek. So, there you go. Red Dragons owed some raffle tickets. Let's see, do I owe anybody else? Any of those? Yeah, Captain Crunch gets two. Red Dragon gets six. Take care of those. How do you spell Captain Crunch exactly? C A P T Crunch 411. Okay. Whoops. So he gets those two. Did I get that right? Captain Crunch 411. Yep, yeah, I think so. And then Red Dragon. Double eight, double nine. Get six. Alright, so the, uh, you guys should be all caught up with those now. Anybody that does exclamation point tix, T I X, into the chat box there should see exactly how many you've got. Entered into this month's raffle. The raffle ticket will be drawn on this Friday's stream, April the 30th. So we do that towards the end of every month. Again, if you uh, if you are new to the stream, you uh, you accumulate those Twitch channel points down in there at the bottom of the chat panel, the alphabets points. You get up to uh, one thousand of those. You can cash those thousand points in for one entry into the raffle. If you save up and get five thousand points, you can cash those in for six entries. Six for the price of five. If you do that all at once, otherwise one thousand for one entry. On Friday, we'll draw. Our uh, winner from the Slant Alpha Fishbowl, and the winner gets their choice of any of these items here. The uh, solid black Slant Alpha t-shirts, which are not the ones that you see behind you, but the solid black t-shirts with the Slant Alpha logo. In a variety of sizes there, you can choose any one of those. You can choose, basically, you're choosing one item from here. You can choose the uh, white trucker cap, or you can choose the mouse pad, the Slant Alpha mouse pad. You can choose the, the coffee mug, which is not the same, but it's very similar to the one that's on this side. This is the tapered one over here. Uh, over here, uh, this is the, the, the regular conventional mug. So that's what we have for uh, for our prize pack. If you don't want any of my my branded stuff, that's fine. You won't hurt my feelings in the least. If you opt instead for a twenty-five dollar gift card to Amazon.com or to the Xplane.org store, and again, all this stuff is funded by the generous support you guys give to the stream 
through those subscriptions, those donations, those cheer bits, and those merch sales. If you want to buy any Slant Alpha stuff, it's over there. Uh, and that helps to support the channel as well. But uh, again, the, the best way you can support the channel is by passing the word to your friends as to what we do here. We do appreciate you letting everybody know how much fun we have on this channel. And Sea George said that you download Ortho for Europe. Yeah, all throughout the um, coastal Mediterranean, Sea George. Uh, I do have, I might, I don't think it will hurt anything. Um, I don't think it'll hurt anything if I pull up Ortho 4 XP and just direct it to the directory and I'll show you the, the tiles that I have. I don't think it'll hurt anything. The base, so I'm going to select the base folder, which is... The base folder is the Ortho folder, so that's got to go in my, my Ortho drive here. Tiles, okay. Yeah, there we go. So if I select that folder, and then I go to the ortho map, I think this will now show you if I let it build. Yeah, so, so if I had also done the, if I had also done the custom scenery folder, it will show you that these are, it'll show you these in dark green. So it'll show that they are li indeed linked. So they are linked, I just didn't, uh, I just didn't specify the folder. When I started it up, for some reason it doesn't automatically this time anymore. Uh, but this shows the tiles that I have throughout the Mediterranean coast. And then up into the uh, Austrian Alps and Italian Alps. And then when we do our flight, we do our Berlin airlift reenactment. When we get to that portion of the leg, we've got the scenery throughout that area. Uh, we will make a stop over here in the uh, Netherlands. And then uh, we already did a stop in Paris, but I think we uh, yeah we did our stop in Paris on the way down. Uh, on the way back, we stop in Netherlands, and then we back up, cross back over into the UK, up through the UK, and then back up to the Faroes. Which uh, once you get north of the UK, the ortho is not that reliable, so I kind of took it all back out for Iceland and for Greenland. Uh, but then once we get back into Canada. A little bit around Goose Bay there, and then through Moncton, and then down to the East Coast here. So that's what I have. I don't have full coverage of everything, but I have kind of picked and chosen. So that's a fair amount, I think. And bear with me, guys. Tell you what, let me take a quick break uh, out of the cockpit, and then I'll come back and show you kind of how our navigation is going to go. So we'll be right back with you in just a couple. Uh, do you, uh, Red Dragon, do you use V-States or recommend it? I've heard good things. Uh, I Red Dragon, I just prefer to, to pick and choose the individual tiles, and that way I can specify the exact regions that I want and the exact regions that I don't need. I can I can kind of work around what I do want, don't want. Plus, I can decide zoom levels. Um, at, you know, it's, it's not as color corrected, obviously. It's just based on the Bing imagery. Um, so the V-States is nice because I think they've gone through and color corrected some of it. But yeah, the folks that do use those uh, those prepackaged V-States and Fork Boys, I've heard, uh, I've heard nothing but good things. So Controller Balan, uh, Ortho is a tool that takes um, satellite imagery and combines it with... Um, land elevation data and ba basically generates photorealistic scenery onto your uh, X-Plane installation. It's not quite as nice as the, the worldwide 3D ortho of Microsoft Flight Sim 2020, but it uh, ends up looking, for the most part, looking a lot better than the X-Plane stock scenery. But above a certain latitude, above about 60, um, 60 latitude, it uh, starts getting a little shaky with uh, terrain data. I will be back with you in just a couple moments, guys, and then we'll start talking through the uh, the navigation. Yeah, a little bit of liquid recycling to do, Captain Crouch. Yeah, dead on. Be back with you in just a couple seconds, guys.
dying guys back with you. Thank you for your patience. Okay, so we're on a let's let's take a quick spin through and see. So we're on a dead center 160 there. That's maybe one degree off. We'll go ahead and fix it. And this is uh, half a degree off, but we'll leave it. Yeah, we'll fix it. All right, so we still have a signal on on uh, VOR one. 50 miles almost dead behind us. We are, in fact, almost nearly tracking that radio outbound. So, at least we have a good reference to where we are. That one, okay, this is going to be the more interesting one, I think. So let's tune that into uh, 113.5. Let's, let's take our positions off of that. So we have this VOR that is 49.8 miles to our left, and you can see the distance is not changing by much. We're getting slightly, slightly, slightly closer to it as we pass by it, but we're not really getting too much closer because we're passing by it. We're not tracking in uh, toward it or away from it. But we can still use it to determine our current position, and this is the one here, Milos. On 113.5. Again, the chart says 113.5, and we can verify that we got 113.5 tuned into the nav one, and it is uh, basically off to our 078, I guess, right? So that kind of means, now of course, we can, we can do this right off of this uh, RMI since we have that direction error there, but we can more, more appropriately, I suppose, do it off of this. So if we are, if it is to our 078, that means we are on the what radio? We're on the opposite of that. The two, uh, yeah, there we go. Basically spin that till it centers. Now it's not going to stay centered because we're not tracking that radial directly inbound or outbound. So we're slowly but surely going to cross that radial. See, it's drifting ever so slowly to the right. But at any given instant, what radial do we happen to be on? Looks like a two five six, a two five six and forty nine, two five six and forty nine miles. We got to we're kind of rounded to the nearest mile. So two five six and forty nine. Maybe by the time we get to uh, forty nine point lower, say maybe a two five seven, right? Two five or no, two fits getting lower. Two five five. So 255 and 49. What do we do with that information, guys? Sky Vector offers this really awesome capability. If you were on a paper chart, you would get your little measuring stick out and you'd figure out the scale and you'd set the ruler up to the center and you'd set the ruler up to where 255 is. Okay, you'd measure from here. Where's 255? 270. Well, there's 18, 24. So there's 255 right here. So you'd measure out in that direction. You'd figure out the scale to go 40. What was the mileage? I forget. 40 to 49 miles. I guess you know doing all this number stuff it really helps if you remember the numbers. So it's getting lower as we go as well. So there's a 253 and 49 miles. All right, well, let's, let's do something with those numbers before I forget them. To plot this in, you put the three I, the letter identifier for the VOR, M-I-L. You put the three numbers for the radial that you are out from it, 253. And you put three numbers in whole mile terms for the distance, 049. Boom. It now plots that point for you as though you did it with a piece of paper. Ruler and whatnot. And so it says that's where we are based on what we just read from that VOR. That's where we are. So that's the track that we've taken. You know, again, we know that we came up kind of close to this island and went somewhere around there. And so we've been tracking, I guess, a 164 from there. And now, according to the VOR, we're there. And we really need to make kind of a left turn and track a 127 for 108 miles to get to our destination. So let's make that left turn. 
and then we'll do that a few more times and that'll be a means of keeping track of how we uh, how we progress so about a one two five I think we'll say just to kind of get headed over into the right direction and uh, we can do that as often as we like but we'll say every you know, what ten minutes maybe Taha 123 is with us. Taha, we are headed down to the Greek island of Crete. Doing some Mediterranean island hopping in the Douglas DC-3. The Aero Works, Douglas DC-3. We are in X-Plane 11 tonight, not in uh, flights in 2020. We fly a mixture of both on this stream. X-Plane tonight. Uh, Red Dragon, how many times can you redeem tickets? You can redeem tickets as many times as you've got enough points for. Uh, it's up to you if you want to dump everything you got into this uh, April drawing. Because remember, that after the April drawing, the tickets all reset. So you start from scratch for May. So if you want to just get a handful in for April and then hold a handful in your pocket to put into the May drawing, that's fine. Or if you want to dump all your uh, accumulated points into the April drawing and then start fresh for May, that's fine too. However you want to strategize, it's fine. But if you've got 15,000 points sitting there and you want to redeem them all for tickets for this drawing, go ahead. Defective crayon says, yeah, PBD, a point, point bearing distance fixes are fun. I've had a few situations where I wanted them in my filed route to avoid some undesirable airways. And ATC had no idea. I love them so much. Yeah, and I typically don't file them uh, as far uh, fart, as a, as fart of a brute. As part, <laughs> what a, I have no idea what I was trying to say. I typically don't file them as part of a route. Um, but I do use them in this exact situation when I'm. I, I use them. I use them honestly more for VFR flying when I want to corroborate my position in a kind of a dead reckon situation. That's when I use them the most. Controller Balan says, uh, "My wife on the other side of the room says she loves your Twitch name, Balan." Um, you ought to have her watch his channel sometimes. That little uh, icon he's got there. Uh, is the I, I, I and I, I hate to say this because I'm kind of gonna 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 you know make him you know question his masculinity here, but it's the most adorable little mascot I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> the little bear with the captain's hat, kind of slightly askew. I love it. It's just it's just cute, man. <laughs> <laughs> Throttle Junkie. <laughs> Throttle Junkie is with us. How's it going, guys? Yeah, so just to, um... No, no we got, so there... We got a little, got a little scenery. It was, might, might have been slightly off of the screen for you guys. Just a little scenery warning. Obviously, there's some object library that I haven't updated, so it gave us a little bit of warning about that uh, scenery package that we're headed to. Hopefully, there might be one or two missing objects that we may not even realize are supposed to be there. Hopefully, it won't... I've had it happen before where we've gotten that warning and we get down to the airport and it's like it's for whatever reason it has blanked out the entire airport. Philip P. Bear is his name, apparently. I've got many variations of him, but I don't have room for them all on Twitch. His name is Captain P. Bear. Philip P. Bear. He's the pee-pee bear. I got you. All right. Oh, I'm down. Um... But, uh, but anyway... So hopefully when we get down to this airport, it, you know, again, it was another one of those freeware X-Plane Org Forum downloads for this airport, but apparently one of the scenery libraries I'm supposed to have, and I have them all, it's just I probably don't have the most updated versions of all of them. So we got a little warning up there. Like I said, hopefully it'll be one or two objects that we don't even realize are, are supposed to be there that aren't, but we'll see what we see when we get there. Most of the time I get that warning. Um, it's just one or two missing objects, and you know, you look around, and you're like, I, I don't know what's not supposed to be here, but there's plenty of stuff here. Let's go ahead and kind of do an updated, what we call point bearing distance, like we were just saying. And uh, let's real quick sync the. Well, I'll tell you what. First of all, let's check on the health of the airplane. Everything look, looks looks good. We're nice and green. Um, fuel pressure's elevated. Do I have the pumps on? No. Okay. Fuel pressure's elevated because the RPMs are up. 
Uh, manifold pressure has slipped a little bit. We can get it back up to a nice 34 if we want to punch through the air just a little bit faster. But RPMs are where they should be, and everything else is looking good here. Um, let us get another bearing. So the bearing has dropped quite a bit since we've been talking, but we're still 45 and change miles away. So we've gotten a little bit closer to it. But again, we're not tracking toward it. We're tracking around it. So the distance is not going to change that radically, but the bearing will as we, as we kind of pass it, right? I'll draw that on the map for you so you get a sense of what's happening here. The current bearing is about a 2, 3... Three, I guess. Two thirty-three. Two three three four five. Okay, that'll be easy. I can't remember I can't possibly forget that. Two three three and four five. M I L two three three O oh, four five. Bump. Okay, so now you see we've made the turn and we're progressing much more toward our destination at this point. And we want to maintain about a one twenty five, it says. And what are we flying? About a 125-ish. So that's good. All right, now let's let's kind of illustrate for you why the why the bearing is changing. When we were at this point, what was the bearing? 246, I think. I don't remember. What do we just do? To I don't remember. I'm making up these numbers, but basically, the further along you get, like down here, we're going to be at like a 180 bearing. You know, but the distance is going to be much more. Our distance is going to be increasing, right? We're getting further away from that VOR. You know, by the time we're down at a 150, we're going to be almost all the way down here at our destination. So that's why the bearing is changing, right? We're not tracking, we're not tracking directly in toward it, right? If we were tracking a radial or something toward it, you know, the bearing would would constantly be, you know, this, um, you know, like this one five zero inbound or this three three zero outbound. But the bearing wouldn't be changing because you would be at a constant distance tracking straight into the VOR or away from the VOR and what would be changing most rapidly would be the distance but in this case because we're not tracking directly toward it or away from it the bearing and the distance are changing so it's different than tracking a radial where you're following that signal we're just using the changing bearing and the changing distance to keep track of our changing position hopefully that makes sense to you guys Throttle Junkie says, it's a lot of work to fly these older planes. I'm surprised they made it to their destinations. Yeah, if you'd been around for our first leg, you would be surprised we made it to our destination, too. <laughs> I think we all were. <laughs> uh, Defective says, from my experience with scenery like that, it's a typo in the library from the artist. <laughs> that could be as well. Yeah, but hopefully, like I said, I, I have seen it before, Defective, where... Where that warning comes up and we get to the airport and it's just runways and taxiways and flat land. So hopefully that won't be the case here. Most often, nine times out of ten, when I see that warning come up, we never even know what object is missing because there's hundreds of objects there. And we're like, well, whatever's missing is missing, but it looks like most of what's supposed to be here is here. Yeah, and, and obviously it's not a big deal either way. It's just for the immersion disruption factor, whatever, I guess. But... Mr. Beast is trying to do a song request. Yeah, we don't do songs on this channel, man. If you want to play songs in the background, have at it. <laughs> you can play what you like. Defective Crayon can play what he likes. Controller Balan can play what he likes. Yeah, we don't do we don't do music on this channel. Um, just for mostly for the copyright infringement issue, um, but also because I do kind of keep it family friendly, and I don't. Uh, I don't want to accidentally have something playing that's not family friendly. Yeah, man. So y'all, if y'all want music in the background, please have at it. There's nothing stopping you. 
but uh, I won't be playing it from uh, from my end. It says fly to Jamaica. Yeah, well, maybe one day. Uh, right now, though, we're on our way down to Crete, the island of Crete in the uh, in the Aegean Sea in the Mediterranean. Captain Crunch says I prefer hearing you sing. Oh, I only sing when I'm when the the foul mood strikes me. Captain Crunch happens every now and then. The engines are my music, says Defective Crayon. That is a much better answer. <laughs> And we did get the follow in there from who? I missed it. We got the follow from Denny, Denny WLP. Copyright issues aside, of course. Yeah, no. Uh, I I don't sing anything well enough at all to uh, to incur any copyright strikes. So. But uh, Denny Welp, I'm not sure how you want that said, but we're just going to probably go with Denny. But uh, thank you for being here. Appreciate you flying along. We're in the AeroWorks Douglas DC-3, which is it's really on the xplane.org forum as a C-47 Skytrain. And if we were, say, for example, to uh, open up these doors, we would see. I can't. Uh, so can I get in there? Yeah, so we can kind of see that it's modeled not really as a very luxurious passenger cabin. This is modeled as the troop transport and slash cargo plane variant for sure. But uh, I do fly it as a uh, as a civilian DC-3, so we just kind of imagine there's uh, luxurious seats back there and um, a uh, doubtlessly gorgeous flight attendant uh, back there attending to your G-rated needs. And this is custom livery for this AeroWorks uh, C DC-3 that was done for us by our friend of the stream, Northwest Orient. Of course, you can guess by his Twitch handle that he likes all things vintage as well. <laughs> no, no, we're not throwing anybody out. What do you do with the drunken paratrooper? What do you do with the drunken paratrooper? There you go, you got some singing. Um, and uh, so that's my grandfather's name that's under the, under the uh, captain's window there. Um, I, again, uh, our friend Northwest Orient put this nice, beautiful livery together for us. And I had, uh, I forget what he had under there originally, but I had asked him to go ahead and change that to my grandfather's name. My grandfather did fly in World War II. He did not fly these particularly. He flew Corsairs, Wildcats, and Hellcats. And he was uh, a naval aviator stationed on the USS Bogue, which was a sub-hunting aircraft carrier working in the Atlantic, and they were the most uh, prolific neutralizers of the German U-boat fleet during World War II. Very proud of his service. What do, you, what do you do with the mixture enriched pilot? What do you do with the mixture enriched pilot? Give him another drink. <laughs> The only older plane I've tried to fly, says the throttle junkie, is the Mustang in DCS. So there's a pretty good, uh, and I, I, don't, I don't know if there's a, if, if you mistyped P-50 instead of P-51, um, I believe the Mustang's the P-51, although I don't know it well enough, there may be a P-50 and a P-51. But uh, there is a P-51 Mustang by um, Skunk Works for X-Plane, and I do, did have it. I don't have it currently installed. When I migrated my X-Plane installation over to this current computer, I didn't bring it over. I flew it a couple times, and it's really cool, but it is a handful. Um, and, uh, yeah, there's, there's giant radial engines, man. It, 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 it takes very little mismanagement to uh, just flip that plane over, because the torque, I mean, the you know, the engine, the engine wants to turn with all kinds of horsepower one way. It wants to flip the plane over the other way. Makes it extremely difficult to handle. Wish says defective says that the uh, wish that the P-47 for X-Plane was as good as the P-51. Yeah. And, and uh, to, to be honest, as I know, I know the 70s, 80s, and 90s military planes more than I know, um, the, the, the older 40s and 50s variations of the military planes. 
Uh, I know I know that Wildcats help cats and Corsairs because, like I said, my grandfather flew them, so I knew a lot about those. Um, but, uh, but yeah, military flying, as much as I am definitely a military supporter and a Navy supporter and a military aviation enthusiast, and I love to go see the Blue Angels and even the Thunderbirds perform uh, when I get the opportunity, um, I don't keep up with... <clears throat> I haven't kept up with, with um, all of the, the library of military aircraft out there. So I, I know civilian aircraft much better than I know uh, um, military aircraft. But yeah, I did fly that Mustang, that P-51 Mustang on stream a couple times. And it's fun. It's just, uh, it, it takes a lot more to learn to fly well than I was able to give it. And says, uh, Defective says, one of my grandfathers was on the B-26. He didn't, said he didn't much care for it. <laughs> yeah, lots of right rudder and lots of pulling back on the stick to uh, keep keep the uh, yeah, you, you keep that tailwheel dug into the ground uh, to keep tracking forward. So yeah, they are definitely a handful. All right, let's take one more position reading, and because we're starting to get close to our destination here, I think. Again, the, the mileage hasn't really changed much. It's starting to increase again. It was 40, I think at the lowest it got to was 45. It's ticking back up towards that 49 now. But let's get another bearing. Uh, it should be decreasing, right? So it should be going this way. And uh, there we go. We got it pretty much dead centered there at one. Uh, well, it's 210, 200, so one, 198 and 47. We'll call it 198 and 48 because it's increasing. I'll tell you what, we'll call it 190, 197 and 48. So let's plot that, but I think it's going to be time to start our briefing into our our uh, destination. What did I say? 197, oh, 197, oh, 48. Again, it's the, the three-letter identifier of the VOR. It's three numbers for the bearing. And then three numbers in terms of the whole mileage. You, you can't do uh, 40, 47.5 or whatever. It's got to round to the nearest whole mile. But there we are, 63 miles from our destination. The progress bar at the top of your screen should be staying pretty close to that. Might be a couple miles closer now because I kind of yammered on for a second. Um, but yeah, somewhere around 60 miles to the destination at this point. And uh, I, can, I, I cannot see that. My purpose in... in and this stream is to show you how to navigate based on just tools that you would have had in the uh, in the actual old school airplane. So just the VOR DME signal and the gauges there. Of course, obviously, in, in, instead of sky vector, you would have had a paper chart that you would have been kind of putting pencil lines on. Uh, but this is the electronic version of the old paper chart that you have to measure out with uh, you know figure out the scale and get your ruler and uh, you know your protractor and all that stuff to kind of measure out that uh, that angle properly. But even just the pre-flight is a pain for such a simple plane. <laughs> yeah, yeah, indeed. Yeah, indeed. And that Skunkcraft's uh, Mustang was modeled pretty, uh, pretty, pretty heavily detailed. So you kind of had to do all those little pre-flight checks on that thing. We can kind of see ahead that there's a tall peak to our right, probably one of these peaks, you know, in this little cluster of land here. You can see that up ahead, kind of straight ahead, and then even over here to the right. And, uh, and this is our destination airport here on the island of Crete. Nikos Kazantzakis, I guess. Nikos Kazantzakis. I'm sure I'm butchering that pronunciation. But at any rate, that's where we're going. LGIR. Let's go ahead and start pulling in a weather briefing. And let's get ready for an arrival here. Dot meets our LGIR, but not too legit. Okay, all right, LGI, I left in there. <laughs> Stop. Hammer time. Um, I was close on that one, Captain Crunch. Well, that's a surprise. 
170 at 7, so if we have a northbound runway, we will take it, but it looks like these are pretty much east and west. We'll see what we got. 170 at 7. Temperature's 10. Q&H is 1014, so standard's 1013, right? 1013.25. So 1014 is like one tick up from standard, so that's going to translate to 292, 2994, probably maybe 2995. If you really want to know specifically, a good way to do it is ask Google. Uh, here you go. 1014 millibars in uh, inches of mercury. 2994 is exactly what I said, isn't it? So we'll set that down here. The Douglas does not have a uh, dual readout there, so you have to kind of do the conversion. Again, you'd have to know the scale and do the conversion paper and pencil or on a calculator or whatever. If you were back in the actual Douglas DC-3, you couldn't necessarily pop that into Google right away, but you probably have a chart with some equivalencies there. One of these panels might even have it, actually. Yeah, anyway. Anyway, you'd have, you'd have some sort of reference in the cockpit for making that conversion, other than Google. Actually, I think uh, I think this Air Force E6B that uh, off schedule descent sent me. No, maybe not. What we'll to play around with this one? This is a really nifty little gadget he gave me, and I got I have I still have yet to kind of really play with it. Anyway. Um. Field elevation there is 115, so we're going to aim for 1,100 feet. So basically 100 feet uh, sea level. We're going to aim for an 1,100-foot pattern. And we're at 2,500 feet now, so we really don't have that much to descend anyway. Um... Say the temperature was temperature's ten. Yeah, okay. Cloud cover, few clouds at twenty five hundred. So we do we do have, you know, some clouds to contend with. We'll see. We will we'll, we'll, by the time we get up onto the clouds, we can drop below them because again we're going to be heading down toward pattern altitude by that point. So hopefully we'll be okay. And. Uh, Wind coming from the south. So LGIR, right? Is that what we said? There were navigraph charts. LGIR. Yeah, there we go. Nikos Kazantzakis. Taxi diagram. Airport info. There we go. All right, so we got a. Uh, we got a 9 and 2, 7, and we got a 12 and 30. Runway 12 is, I guess, as close as we're going to get to, uh, close as we're going to get to a run to a, yeah, to the, to the wind direction. Wind is coming from 170. So I guess that's what we're going to want. We don't really have a, a really good pattern entry. If we we're going to do a full pattern, you know, a full pattern would be like this, and we'd come in from the east. We might, well, we could come, we could come up the coast, and then do a left downwind, 45, and then left downwind. Yeah, well, maybe we'll do that. We'll shoot to come up from the coast, from the, uh, from further out here. That's what we'll do. And then a 45 left entry, and a left pattern to runway 12. Wind is coming kind of this way, right? So. A little bit of a right to left crosswind. Seven knots, so the crosswind component's not gonna be that high. Two sevens a nice approach. Yeah, I, I mean I think we're gonna be coming from that way, Captain Crunch, but the with the wind is one seven zero. So that'll be kind of a bang on crosswind for two seven. Um 
So I think we're going to end up on 12. We'll, we'll, we'll plan on 12. But we'll, we'll head further up the coast and then we'll kind of enter a, enter a 45 there. Um, do we have on this, uh, well, let's, let's look and see. Yeah, I, I would presume that our GA area, well, it says business jet parking area over to the right. Oh, all right, hold on. Light aircraft parking. Yeah, I think I think we'll we'll uh, we'll do our just we'll just do a VIP type thing. And we'll park in this area here to the east of the terminal. I think more properly we might park in this area, but we'll come over here. We'll we'll, we'll anoint ourselves VIPs and we'll park in this area just to the east of the terminal. So, uh, taxi plan for that. If we land on runway 12, we want to kind of run across the crossing runway, probably make it off at Foxtrot and in. That's that's my uh, that's my guess. If we're able to get down early, we can get off at uh, Echo and go come kind of straight there. And if we go really late, what we do is we either have to make the left there or the left all the way at the end and then come across. So we got a handful of taxi plants. My, my, my gut tells me we're off at Foxtrot, uh, but if we can get down and stopped in a, in a much more reasonable amount of time for a Douglas, then I think we're off at Echo and then right in to our parking area. That'll be the plan. It says if you're flying in a DC-3, I'd say that's more than enough card, more than enough cred to be considered VIP. Well, hopefully you're right. Uh, we do have an NDB here at the at the airport 431. So I mean, we kind of know it's we're really going to be able to kind of see, I think, an approach from the east. But uh, just as a cross reference, I think let's go ahead and tune that 431. No, nothing. Nada. That's two NDBs tonight that hasn't haven't worked. The NDB radio on. I'm not sure what that. Not sure what those do, guys. I don't think I've ever turned. I don't think I've ever turned that knob. But in any case, we've got four, three, one, two, and then it's not picking up anything in any of those four positions. I mean, obviously the one says off, but you know. But I wonder if maybe that maybe I bumped that without knowing it earlier, and that's why we didn't uh, we didn't pick up that first one, perhaps. All right, well we'll keep an eye on that. Let's go ahead and take a position reading from the VOR as we have been. We know we got we know we got to be getting close. We can see land up here, but let's let's see how close. Uh, bearing to station now is or bearing from station I should say right one seven zero. On the nose, or is that a 171? I guess that'd be a 170. So this is a 171. And 171 and 67. So let's kind of see where that puts us. MIL 171067. So there we are, 30 miles out. So if we see all this rocky stuff to our right, it's going to be in a kind of a uh, kind of a little harbor area, kind of hidden behind it. So if we can kind of see up ahead to the right where that point kind of dips out, and there's an area where the land kind of recedes there, I think we're kind of. Maybe come to about a 110. 
And remember, like I said, we're going to kind of aim really almost. If we can spot this island, we're really going to aim for this island and then come down and then and then there's our pattern to runway 12. I didn't draw a very very squared off base turn there, but there you go. So we'll kind of use that island as a guideline and then kind of cut in a beam to the, uh, the shore there. So do we see that island up ahead? Maybe? Is that that there? Yeah, I think we're aiming for it. Oil rig. good here guys I think we're good so if we were from where we last plotted that on the, to the corner of that island on a 110 and 28 miles so about 10 minutes and I think we are pretty much on a 110 yeah magnetically we're on about uh, maybe a 109 and a half there so let's Sync these up. Yep, so I'd say that's the corner of the island that we're headed toward. And then so our runway should be in. We might even be able to see the airport there. Vaguely as it uh, vaguely as it may be, but we'll we'll cut in. And how are we doing with that yeah, that NDB? Anything? Anything? Nothing? Maybe it's broken. Maybe I broke it. <laughs> Probably broke it on that first landing. So a 50 watt NDB station is only has a 20 mile range. Okay, do, is it marked on here what the strength of that is? Or I mean, if we pull that up, and I mean, if we pull that up in air nav, it probably tells us. But no, it doesn't indicate on the map what the strain, what the range is. I'm just used to the, I guess I'm used to the Canadian ones where it's like you have those NDB airways up there, those Alpha and Bravo airways. Alaska has a bunch too, and you can you can reach those things much further than you can a. Uh, VOR, a couple hundred miles, so I guess I'm used to used to that. But yeah, so so X Plane does model a lot of these NDBs, and we found in uh, Southern Greenland as well a bunch of NDBs that we can only pick up for yeah, you know, like like Qualif says, a few dozen miles at best. But again, at this point, I, I don't know. I'll have to check next time I load this this plane up to see what position this. Uh, this knob boots in because I have no idea. There was a 2000 watt one in Newfoundland. Says Koala. Yeah, I know there's ones, there's ones in those far remote areas. A lot of times, like the VORs don't even have as good radio range. Uh, so once we hit the corner of this island, we're six miles from shore. And again, we're going to actually go down further, maybe from the end of the island. So let's, let's modify this path a little bit from the end of the island. And we'll swing it out, you know, maybe something like that. I mean, I'm not, not drawing it exactly as we're going to fly it, but still. 
I would su I would suggest it's probably going to look more like this. We'll go around. We'll go up the coast, and then that's when we'll start our base. I mean, I'm sorry, our downwind, our base, and then our final. And the, the downwind and base I've drawn a little bit more distant than I actually intend to fly them. Okay, now, now at this point we are starting to get into that cloud cover too. Alright, so I think it's time to start this descent. Ladies and gentlemen, just about to start our descent into Crete, so we ask that you return to your seats and fasten your seat belts, whether there's in the low 50s Fahrenheit with partly cloudy skies and light winds coming from the south. The cabin crew is going to come around one last time to collect trash and take care of any last minute needs. Thank you again for flying Slant Alpha Airways. Throttle Junkie asks, why not just a straight shot into the runway? Uh, a couple of reasons, Throttle Junkie. Uh, number one, if this was a, well, of course this is a really a towered field, so we really probably would get a straight in approach if we were coming in VFR. I don't know VFR procedures, you know, outside of the U.S. too well, but yeah, it, it, it's a towered field, so you get a pattern entry based on what the tower controller says, so you probably would just get a, 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 a VFR straight in. Um, number one, I don't know that I have a good distance reference, so I'm going to have, uh, I would struggle to kind of set up um, set up the right altitude. I don't have a good sight picture of it yet, so I don't know exactly where I am as far as lined up with the runway. I don't know if there's an instrument approach to runway 12, but uh, I'm doing this VFR, so uh, I, I don't just, I don't have a good visual way from this distance and not being familiar with the airport and the surrounding landmarks. I don't have a good visual way. Oh, there we are. There's our NDB. A good visual way to set myself up on a, on a straight in, lined up, and at the appropriate altitude. So I'm going to do kind of a little flyby of it to just get myself established, get, get myself down to a pattern altitude, get a good visual reference to the uh, downwind, see the threshold, you know, set up on a, on a, on a good base and final turn. And, And uh, just get the night, get the get the approach nice and stable. Otherwise, I feel like I'd kind of be guessing at where I would need to be laterally to get lined up with it and all that stuff. There probably are some instrument approaches, and if we were doing this as an IFR flight, then uh, I would be probably working on one of those right now. But given that we did this as a VFR flight, I'm going to do a visual entry. I think just doing that little extra flyby gives you a sense of you know, getting lined up with it getting set up uh, at a good distance and a good altitude. I do think we, yeah, I was going to say, I just suddenly remembered I need to get into the mains here. Because the uh, aux tanks are just about bled dry and I well, haven't been checking. Fortunately, I thought of it just in time. Right main, left main, okay, I think we're good. Gotta get the seatbelt signs on. Cows can come into trail. Mix to auto rich. Radio altimeter set to 10x, which I think it already is. Yeah, it is. Tailwheel checked, locked, it is. And fuel pumps can come on. We're going to slowly start edging the prop lever forward, which is going to uh, increase the RPMs, but we're not really adding power. We're just kind of downshifting the truck as we come down the hill. No, it's off. Yeah, it's kind of a beam that island somewhere. Yeah, I can, I can kind of make out the airport property. So it's there, and I think in order to get myself nice and lined up for a approach to runway 12, I think we'll come in from the east, like I said. Once we can kind of see the runway layout, we'll go 
go ahead and set ourselves up on that downwind. Cousin Sockus traffic, Douglas 514 out to Victor's about six miles north. We're going to be circling to the east and joining a 45 to left downwind runway 1 2. Cousin Sockus. Okay, our speed is coming down to about 120. I don't want to uh, really drop any more speed at this point. So we know the airport's over there. We can kind of, let's kind of aim for the little town, the little village there as our point to join the shore. Sim Caesar is with the us, Sim Caesar. As well, sir. Spirit? Yes, he did, sir. Hello. Spirit, sir. Or Bardo, a touch of knowing do. Oh, uh, about 11, sir. <laughs> Sim Caesar, how are you? Got our Twitch baby, nine months. Twitch babies gestate at approximately the same rate as human babies. Who knew? <laughs> Slowly getting the uh, prop lever forward. We do need to add some power. We do want to keep, well, we got about 110 knots. So I don't want to get much slower than 120 at this point. We're a little far out. But we'll turn in now. Come up the coast. Uh, picked up some altitude again, so let's get back down. We're going to get back down to about 1,100, about 120 knots. Come up the coast. We'll join our uh, join our left end wind of runway one two. I'll tell you what. I'm going to do a real quick rebrief of the METAR just to make sure it hasn't changed significantly. GIR. Yeah, it's the same. It's the same exact observation. You can see from the time. 27th at oh no, no it's actually a half hour later but none of the details have changed at all so half hour later nothing has changed all right props are full forward we got the cows yeah we did get the cows into a uh, trail Fuel pumps are on flight attendants prepare cabin for arrival Still picking up altitude. Hey, friend, that's going to start the prediction train here. You guys, yeah, you guys can start putting your predictions in. You do not need a bot command that just tells the, the furry co pilot to respond. So, no bot command is necessary. We're just looking for a number into the chat, positive or negative. We know that you mean a descent rate. Either way. We do occasionally giveaways, we do occasionally perform giveaways on this channel where we'll use that as our means of determining a prize winner. Tonight's just for fun. Uh, 
still need to get a little bit of a descent in. So now we've got a nice straight in for runway 27 going. But with the wind coming 17, we are going to get up closer to the field. We'll, we'll turn to a... Uh, What's the downwind? So if, we're, if it's runway 1-2, then the downwind will be a 3 0, zero right? And there's 1,100 feet, so let's level it out. And again, uh, cross the, the, yeah, past the crossing runway, and then a right-hand turn off. All right, let's keep 1,100 in it. Down below 120, we can go flaps one. We'll add some power to counteract that additional drag, but we do want the plane to float up a little bit because I'm about 100 feet shy of my uh, pattern altitude. Thousand Sakas traffic, Douglas 514 Delta Victors joining uh, off the 45 to a left downwind, runway 12 midfield, Kazan Sakas. So I said, uh, I said 12 would be, a downwind for 12 would be 3-0, but it, I, I feel like, uh, yeah, okay, maybe I did overturn it just a little bit. Let's bring it back. Yeah, and there's there's more of a parallel downwind heading, maybe about a 3-1 here. I don't know if, the, if everything is just slightly out of sync or what the runway headings are here, but uh, I feel like this is about maybe a 3-1-5. I feel like this is about a downwind heading here. We can look at the ground track after after we get down, see how we're doing. So we're about 100 knots on downwind, which is about where I'd like to be. We can pull a little bit of power and get flaps two and gear out. Still want to keep about 1,100 and run it out to about where we're at a 45 degree angle over the left shoulder. I think we're going to run it another 30 seconds and then we'll start to base turn. Descending yet. Constant Sockers traffic, Douglas 5, 1 4 Delta Victors. Left base, left downwind to left base turn now for runway 1 2, Constant Sockers. Alright, 90 knots, go ahead and get flaps 3 in, put some more power in, trim it down, counteract the extra lift, power in to counteract the extra drag. If we were at a 3-1, we're going to turn it to about a 2-2. Two -two. That'll be our base heading. Let's get our eyeballs on it. Not doing too bad here, guys. Last call for those predictions, guys, as I make my turn now. It flaps four. Let the extra drag slow us down. We might add a touch of power in. Yes, uh, Captain VFR, it's the Benny overlay up top there. And it's a plug-in, a landing rate Lua plug-in that's going to come up at the bottom right. Okay. Came in a little high on the base turn. I think we're okay now, though. And again, 170, so it's going to be pushing us to the left. So we're going to put the nose over to the right. Get the right wing down when we can. And then we'll get down to about 80 knots, maybe 75 knots down final. Uh, 
and 70 over the numbers. I am a little fast here, so we might float it. <coughs> Maybe I can get the speed under control here before we get uh, too much further. There's 75-ish. Runway's a lot flatter here than the first one we landed on, huh? And 70 over the numbers. Overdoing the crosswind correction just a little bit, it looks like. Thirty-three. We'll take it. And looks like we can make that first turn off just after the crossing runway. If I can get the uh, tailwheel unlocked, there we go. Can't quite see where that first turn off is. That's a little further up. Okay, I see, I see, I see. I see. Well, I can't tell now if that was Echo. The Echo, I think, was right at, the, right at the intersection, so this might indeed still be Foxtrot that we're turning off on. Yeah, so I think we did. I think we did indeed turn off at Foxtrot, so we'll turn back towards the terminal. So that worked out more or less like I called it, yeah? What's that say? I think, it's, I think it's going to be Foxtrot. Yep, it was indeed Foxtrot. Okay, flaps can be stowed. Anti-collision. Landing lights off, taxi light on. Pito heat off, fuel pumps off. Hell's open. Kazantzakis traffic, Douglas 5, 1, 4, Delta Victor, clear, runway 1, 2, Kazantzakis. Going to the VIP ramp. Speed that? Nope, not price is right rules, man. It's not closest without going over, it's simply closest. Do I look like Drew Carey to you? <laughs> don't answer that. I don't want to know. I do not want you to answer that question. <laughs> no. No, I don't. See, George, no, I don't. And anyway, my channel, my rules, no price is right rules, closest to either direction. Do they have a DC-3 marking on this pavement? I, I bet they don't. Alright, parking brake on, taxi light off. Tailwheel can be relocked. Go ahead and just run through the shutdown procedure real quick, and then we'll catch up with those predictions. Transponder can, uh, yeah, transponder's already on on uh, uh, VFR, so we'll just shut it off. Go ahead and get the uh, mix magnetos and um, generators off. Seatbelt signs can come off. You guys can start piling out. We'll get the doors open for you. We'll get the trim reset. And we'll check on the fuel and ETA. So the ETA was supposed to be 11 o'clock, but we we got off 11. We got off a half an hour late, so we thought 11:30. Uh, but we're still about 15 minutes late. So I think we took not quite a direct path. We kind of wandered in. Uh, we did, yeah, we did more of a curved path than a than a direct path. So I think it did wind up taking us a little bit longer. So we'll check the ground track on that and see how we. Uh, see how we did but there we go guys the prop and uh, throttle levers can now come down 
the uh, radio master and inverter can come off. The smoking beacon and nav lights can come off. Fuel tanks. Go back to off there. And off there. Get the cow flaps closed. And there they are. And the master battery switch off. And uh, I think we are done, guys. As we're continuing to pile out of the aircraft, we'll go ahead and go ahead and close up the doors. We are going to watch the landing replay there, so uh, we'll close the doors up so we can kind of see how that. This is a little bit of a long walk. This is not quite the VIP spot that I thought it was. I didn't do too bad a job on the parking. Uh, not quite the VIP spot that I thought it was. You guys have a little bit of a long walk to the terminal. I do apologize for that. So uh, especially after that first landing, you guys probably still shaking a little bit. So uh, yeah. I, I, I could have gotten you a little closer to the terminal. Alright. Well, let's see. How do we... How do we do with the... With the predictions? So, Qualop... Yeah, so, Dave Rendon started it off. 77. Qualop 110. OBFG always kind of lurks in there at the last second. With a 90. He said 420. Maddie didn't have... Maddie either is a... Uh, is, is a... Um is a questionably legal substance enthusiast or just really didn't have any faith in me. 420 was what he put in. 165 said throttle junkie. That's actually pretty close there. Speed nut went 68. C. George 99. 139 said Captain BFR. 128 went both Smitty and JK back to back. And 129, not JK, went one closer. Vapor Riser Wizard stopped in. Vaporizer Wizard, how are you? Appreciate you being here. And uh, put a 110 in. And uh, yeah, so what was the um, what was the actual? Was it was it indeed 139? So I think VFR, Captain VFR, was either right on it or extremely uh, close. Very cool. Uh, unusually clear days for Heraklion says Qualops says usually it's plastered in marine stratus. Yeah, so we uh, we snuck in. We yeah. We were expecting some clouds at 2,500. There's a few here. Well, I mean, I think it did say few. So we got lucky with the weather, with the cloud cover here, guys. Speed Nut says, uh, still working. So whatever it is, you're in a better spot than I am at the moment. Indeed. Great. So Dave uh, Dave said, great flight and landing. Yeah, thank you so much for that, guys. We'll, uh, uh, Maddie's got to check out. Yeah, we'll check the replay out of the, uh, of the landing, see how we did. Um, we're just, that's going to automatically disconnect us from... Um, X pilot. So we'll go ahead and shut X pilot off. Yeah, let's let's wind it back just a few. Oh, uh, actually, before I do that, yeah, let's look at the ground track just to see. Okay, so that yeah, I mean that that pattern wasn't it wasn't quite squared off on the the base to final turn. I did that a little early, but uh, that didn't work out too bad. But yeah, I think we did. Oh, we flew right over an aircraft carrier. And I didn't even see it. Um, but we did kind of come down the coast a little bit more in a curved path. You can see here the plots that we put in from the VOR. So I definitely took a longer path to this run uh, to this airport than I uh, planned on. So anyway, no worries. We got here and uh, we are here now, and we had a good time. I think let's let's uh, let's check the landing out, guys. There we go. All right, well, thanks for checking us out tonight. We appreciate it. If, you was, if, if you, it was your first time here, we hope that you'll uh, spread the word. And again, if you're accumulating those Twitch channel points at the bottom, our monthly raffle drawing is going to be on Friday the 30th. So go ahead and redeem those raffle points, those uh, Twitch channel points, so 1,000 at a time. Let's see, how's, how'd that look? Yeah, minor, minor little, yeah, little Douglas bounce. I mean, that's kind of SOP right there for the Douglas, right? Yeah, I thought so. I was very happy with it, to be to be honest. Yeah, and so Echo was indeed right there where the inter runways intersected. I think I could have slammed the brakes and made that, but um, but rolling it down the Foxtrot was certainly the way easier way to go with that. But yeah, that worked out pretty well. We can uh, roll it back one more time and uh, and see it from the fly overview in just a second here. 
We got follows there at the last moment from None Shall Pass, Big D. Gotta love it. None Shall Pass. None Shall Pass. And we got the follow there from Sebastia is with us as well. Yeah, so as you accumulate those Twitch channel points, don't forget to cash those in for uh, your monthly raffle. We'll make that drawing on Friday. 1,000 Twitch channel points, alphabet points gets you one entry in, and 5,000 gets you five entries in. You got all kinds of Slant Alpha merch you can choose from, or you can pick the uh, $25 Amazon or xplane.org store gift card if you don't want any of my crap, which is fine. Uh, all of that stuff possible because of the support that you guys give the channel in, in terms of your subscriptions and your donations and your tiers and your uh, merchandise sales. This, uh, this is stuff. This is Redbubble stuff. This is not the same stuff as what's in the prize vault. But the Redbubble stuff there is uh, exclamation point merch if you want to check any of that stuff out. And that helps us to support the channel as well. Um, we've got our, our social media our Twitter and our Facebook links at the bottom of the screen there. You can uh, follow us if you want to see what's coming up in the short term. If you want to see the full show schedule, what's down there underneath the About tab on the Twitch picture window, or it's over on our Facebook and it's over on our Discord server as well. You can join the Discord and uh, join the chat 24-7 and uh, appreciate having you in there as well. If you would like. And then the YouTube channel over there on the far left has... Um, has our old flight broadcasts, but I've also put in, and there's some tutorials in a playlist called uh, That's in Tutorials. I cleaned up the playlist for tutorials just last night, by the way. The That's in Tutorials are now in their own channel, um, or their playlist, rather. The Wings Over New England flights for the Boston Virtual ARTCC, they are in their own playlist. And then I've got the, the aircraft-specific tutorials in their own playlist. So we've got three separate playlists now for tutorials. Uh, but the ones where you can check out to see what you say to air traffic controllers or how you put together IFR routing or VFR routing um, or what these slant codes mean, slant alpha, slant whiskey, the stuff you know we talk about on the channel from time to time, that stuff is all in a playlist now called that sim tutorials so you can certainly check that out flying high checking us out again at the uh, last moment let's wind this back and watch the landing one more time guys one more time and let's see if we can get that where's that melvin leroy flyover view no, that's not it that one great tutorial says smitty thank you so much glad that you've made good use of it man Just dropped my phone. I was trying to show you something on that in just a moment. Yeah, so I, I think I was overdoing the crosswind correction. Um, we got that sorted out at the last minute. How was the center line adherence here? I think by the time I got it sorted out, yeah, it wasn't too bad. Nice straddle the, yeah, straddled the line. A little bit of a minor bounce, but that's kind of normal with the Douglas and really with a lot of, ain't almost any tail dragger. One more flight, and I'll gift three subs. Yeah, we got to call it. We call it a night, man. It's almost midnight Eastern time. I do appreciate that flying high, though. I, I appreciate your uh, your offer of support. All right. The uh, last thing I want to mention, uh, and I've, as I've covered uh, everything there at the bottom of the screen, I, I do want to mention that we're a uh, media partner for Flight Sim Expo, which is uh, September 24th to 26th at the Town and Country Resort in San Diego, California. And I am attending in person, God willing, and uh, the, what's the worst, what's the thing? God willing and the flood don't, I don't know, floods don't, I forget what the freaking saying is. But anyway, 3,585 hours until I leave the house to go catch my flight down to uh, San Diego, California for the, uh, for the Flight Sim Expo 2021, Town and Country Resort, San Diego, California. We will be streaming from there. Uh, as as much as we can. We're going to have a good time there. We're going to catch up with some old friends and see some folks we haven't seen in a long time, and we'll stream as much of that uh, party as we can, and it's going to be a party, so hope that you'll join us that weekend in September. In the meantime, we uh, did talk about the show schedule coming up in the short term on the stream. The next stream we have for you is coming up on Friday. We are going to pull that monthly raffle drawing that we were talking about on Friday, April 30th, but in the meantime, also, 
we will be flying some more of those aforementioned Boston virtual ARTCC wings over New England flights. We are uh, going to hopefully get back into the Mooney ovation for that with our stuttering, st 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 stuttering issues taken care of now, hopefully in Microsoft Flights in 2020 to where we've got that sorted out and under control. God willing and the creek don't rise, that's what it is. <laughs> Uh, but that'll be IFR flights number five through seven. The Wings Over New England flights, a series of, of uh, procedural training flights you can do, kind of self-study, and it's uh, six VFRs and 24 IFRs. So we've done VFRs one through six and IFRs one through four. We're going to see if we can knock out five, six, and seven for you on Friday the 30th in that uh, Mooney ovation for flights in 2020. So we'll be back in uh, Microsoft's product here uh, on our next upcoming stream. A week from tonight, we resume this very tour. Uh, we're going to take off here from uh, Crete, and we're going to head down to Castellariso, LGKJ. That will be the point where we are the furthest from home. The furthest away from Baltimore, Maryland, will be next Monday, a week from tonight, as we depart from here to Castellariso, and then on to Samos from there. So that'll be one week from today. Again, full show schedule available in all those places that I mentioned to you before. All right, let's wrap this up. Who we got that we can uh, send some love to? Oh, oh, look at this. Oh, we've got a we've got a few folks. We've got a few folks that we have actually mentioned on stream tonight. What do we have going on here? Okay, yeah, we've got our friend Northwest Orient is up streaming. He's he streams so rarely but uh he's always fun to watch and he's like i said lover of all things vintage so um you know definitely a friend of the channel and he's the author of that beautiful custom livery that you saw on that douglas dc3 just there moments ago so we will send you over to him he's flying uh the concord he's going from halifax to rome and so we'll go ahead and dump you over to his stream and you can watch the rest of his flight as he continues. And it, like I said, please tell him that we said hello, a dear friend of the stream, and hope that you'll enjoy his content as well, flying in that uh, flying in that Concord. Looks like he's about three quarters of the way there, so we'll catch him in time for a descent and arrival. All right, guys, thanks again. We appreciate you being here. Hope that you have a great rest of your week. We will see you Friday from Boston. In the meantime, be healthy and safe in your own travels and your own adventures, and we'll catch you on the next one, guys.